Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hawks Nest. Tonight's match is between the Princeton Vikings and the Lakota Thunderhawks with a special start off tonight with the Warbird flying over. There we go. That was from the Butler County Warbirds, giving us a nice flyby on this beautiful evening for football. Hawks are taking on the Princeton Vikings today, Dave. Uh, GMC matchup. Princeton is two and two currently, and the Thunderhawks come in with their three and one record. And yeah, Ken, uh, Princeton was defeated last week by Coleraine football squad of a count of 24 to 14. And so they are uh, ready to go tonight as we see the Warbird flying off into the distance. As he's, he's coming off a very impressive win against uh, Middletown last week, 21-9. Yes, the, the Thunderhawks uh, uh, had a slow start last week, but uh, came back strong and uh, put up uh, 21 points before the end of that was all over. And uh, the Thunderhawks came out of here with a nice win. So Gives the Hawks two GMC wins in a row. They defeated Mason the week prior, so they are 2-0 and in the league. So, ladies and gentlemen, tonight it's uh, Dave Royce and my good partner. Ken Yablonski. We'll be giving you the play-by-play -play in color as we listen to the Lakota band here before we get started. About five minutes till kickoff here. Beautiful night here at the Hawk's Nest. Sun beginning to set in the background. You know, Ken, you couldn't ask for a better night tonight as you see the band there. Um, again, another one of the strong points here in Lakota, not only Lakota East, Lakota West, uh, the, the band strength that we have in this uh, district is just uh, stronger than most, uh, second to none, and um, they always are out here in strength and give us a good show. Dave, I'm impressed by how much the band practices. They're always in the parking lot. They have a couple nights a week, they go six to nine, and it seems like every time football's taking the field or leaving the field, the band is out there working hard. Yep. Practicing. They have a contest coming up uh, next weekend, I believe up in Columbus, and they're looking forward to seeing if they can place in that contest there. And you know, Ken, I always say the greatest thing about high school and college uh, sports is the band. It, it really makes the difference in the game and, uh, and the crowd and the, the atmosphere. So uh, hats off to all the band members and uh, everybody that supports them that make uh, high school sports such a special thing. Waiting here for our teams to take the field. About three minutes till kickoff. So yeah, tonight uh, we'll see what the uh, coach Rick Haynes has for the uh, Lakota Thunderhawks. And um, there's uh, some adversity with the Hawks today. Uh, they're, they have had T.J. Kathman as their starting quarterback uh, the last couple of weeks, and he had some shoulder injury. I believe uh, we heard he has to have surgery coming up next week. So we wish the best to him for his healing. And uh, Mark Krzyzewski is capable of stepping in and being the backup quarterback. He started the year as quarterback, senior leader, and uh, see if Mark can uh, move the team down the field and, and lead the Hawks to victory here. Yep, Ken, we got some other uh, injuries out there too for the Hawks uh, on, on the offensive side. It uh, sounds like Joshua Thornhill may not be available tonight. And then on the defensive side, uh, Connor Bryant, one of the senior linebackers, uh, hurt his uh, shoulder too as well in the last uh, competition against the middies there. So a uh, little banged up tonight for, for the Thunderhawks, but uh, plenty of guys there to step right back in and, and uh, have their opportunity to shine tonight against these Princeton Vikings. Um, as you said, coming off of a loss uh, last week, uh, but they are two and two. And, uh, you know, they, when you look at all the rankings, whether it's a national state or in the, in the division here, things are pretty tight between these two organizations. Absolutely, they played a close game last year. Uh, last year, East had the lead and time expired. Uh, the officials wind up putting a couple more seconds on the clock and there was a play at the end. Princeton caught a pass at the end to take the lead. Uh, unfortunately for Princeton, there was a forfeit to that victory the next day. So it was a roller coaster uh, matchup between these teams last year. So I'm sure both clubs remember that quite a bit here. So uh, we should be in for a good one tonight. Uh, like I said, the, uh, the the weather couldn't be any better. The band's here. The crowd's rolling in. Um, Dave, I want to give a shout-out to the cheerleaders here. Our cheerleaders were on Warm 98 this morning. They were on the uh, morning show there. They got to, uh, with Jim and Amanda, uh, they got to give a shout-out to their 
families and to their teachers and to their coaches. They got to do a cheer. They're in a competition here. Uh, if our viewers have a chance to go out and vote on warm98.com, uh, click on the football uh, Fridays tab. And actually, both these teams' cheerleaders are out there. Uh, but if we can sway vote for Lakota East cheerleaders, uh, the winning uh, team that did the best cheer for the morning show, they had to get Jim and Amanda's name in the cheer and Warm 98 in the cheer. And the winning uh, team with the most votes, uh, $1,000 to their cheer program. Yep, I ran in the gym on the way in up here to the booth, and he told me the same, and he said that the East represented themselves well. So here we get a first shot of the uh, Princeton Vikings coming out of their locker room. Um, they're looking pretty fired up as they uh, come around all the uh, stuff that the uh, East Thunderhawks have here in their home game, the tunnel and whatnot. So the, the, the Vikings have to get their way around that, get to their side of the field. But uh, player to watch right there is uh, Paris Johnston, and he is their offensive lineman. Uh, he's got a national ranking on him. He's actually verbally committed to Ohio State, and he is their offensive lineman that uh, is the one to watch in this game. Yep, uh, they, they came out looking like they were fired up as they got around all the paraphernalia there that East has set up for their for their home game. So uh, the Vikings are out of the locker room, off to the side, uh, ready to go, and here comes our uh, Lakota Thunderhawks uh, with number 22 leading the way. That's, That's Michael Howard, uh, linebacker. He's leading the team in tackles, and he has the honor of carrying the flag or hatchet or whatever they decide to carry at the beginning of each game. They rotate that around. Each player gets to... Uh, each captain and each senior leader gets to do that one, one time during their tenure here. So there's the Thunderhawks coming out, getting fired up, getting into the tunnel. Um, as we're just a few seconds away here from the, the game getting ready to start, uh, looks like the officials are ready. And uh, Thunderhawks are in their tunnel, ready to come out, just waiting for their cue. And uh, I hear the music revving up out there. Let's hear this crowd get behind the Thunderhawks here. And here they come with the, uh, with the ladies uh, from the cheer block there leading the way. Dave East has to get off to a good start here. They want to control the ball, but they need to dominate uh, possession early here. They need to uh, not turn the ball over. They had a couple turnovers in their last couple games, so they need to secure that ball if they're going to have a chance at uh, they want this game to be low scoring, I presume, against Princeton. Uh, Sycamore beat Princeton, and it was a low scoring game, and that benefited Sycamore. And I'm sure East is well aware of that, that uh, they need to have a low scoring affair here. Yeah, East has got to get off right away from the get go. Um, uh, from the stats, it looks like Princeton doesn't waste any time to get the ball down into the red zone and start scoring in the first quarter. So um, East definitely needs to get things rolling and started right away here as well. Uh, Looks like uh, the, the boys are huddled up um, there in front of us uh, trying to figure out that looks like our our hands team or our kicking team as the uh, band is uh, leaving the field. As we got to hear a little bit of the band again as the uh, boys came out uh, again just that makes the makes the Friday night um, as we're getting ready to start looks like uh, Princeton is setting up for to receive the ball, so uh, looks yeah. like East will be kicking off. Gavin Myers will take the helm as kicker. Again, Gavin is raising money for cancer and cancer awareness with each field goal, an extra point he makes. Money does get donated to the Cancer Research Fund. He's been doing that for a number of years, and he will be the one to first touch the ball with his left foot. There you go. and. Uh, as you and I know, uh, Ken, all that's special uh, as we as we look to our left uh, with uh, Cincinnati Children's North Campus right next to us, and uh, and me personally uh, in our in our family situation right now is uh, my oldest daughter Emma is at home uh, with some recovery treatment today, so we uh, shout out to her and uh, love you. Uh, hope you're doing well there. It's nice to have that facility as close to campus as we do. Uh, there's, uh, we went for an appointment a couple weeks ago, and there's families that come regionally. You know, families drive four or five hours to get to that facility, and we yep. have a nice uh, two-minute drive to get to it. Yep, we're definitely privileged here. So uh, here we go. Everything's lined up here at the Hawks' Nest, uh, starting off the game with the opening kickoff. That's going to be about down just inside. Nope, he took that inside the... Uh, Stepped on the line there, so that'll come out to the uh, 
Yep, Ken, he stepped inside the end zone, so that's an automatic uh, touchback. So the Vikings will take over. First and 10 on the 20. I look for the Vikings to have a quick strike offense. Uh, they tend to get to the line quick, at least last year they did. Uh, similar to uh, some other teams we've seen, Turpin did that, where they get to the line and they look over to the sideline for the play. And uh, there's a shot at uh, Paris Johnson Jr. there, 77. Uh, just a mammoth uh, blocker there for Princeton. Yep, and there goes Princeton's first play, a uh, little handoff to the left-hand side. That's from uh, MJ Horton is the quarterback there for the Vikings, who uh, has moved around a few times, right, Ken? He's been in a couple different schools, uh, tried his luck at LaSalle, and uh, came back to, to Princeton there this year. Very uh, good kid, class act kid. Uh, I've met him a couple times and carries himself nicely. So uh, he'll take the helm here tonight. We'll see what he has in the coaches from the Vikings as he's in the shotgun, hands off to the left-hand side again, finds a hole, brings it up to about the 28-yard line, and uh, the Thunderhawks bring him down. That's number 33. Hayden King. Hayden King with the stop. There's another senior linebacker there for the Thunderhawks. Thomas Boyd was the runner for Princeton. Uh, he gets most of the carries for them. Him and Horton share the... Uh, I'll take that back. James Price uh, gets a lot of the carries. Thomas Boyd is third on the Princeton uh, number of carries list. So and the Vikings. Right to the line quickly. Back to the line. Vikings are right back on the shotgun. MJ is ready, slapping the hands and looking over to the sideline. And this is what Turpin did against East, and it gave him trouble. Now, East should be ready for it. Uh, they knew Princeton There's a hand up, up the middle. Doesn't go much, and uh, it'll be interesting with the spot here, Ken, whether or not they're going to get a first down out of this. Looks like they are. They just crossed that 30-yard line. A couple inches there, Dave, and it's going to be a first down for the Vikings. Close so, to stopping them at the line. So we got a first down, but uh, I see a... a Referee down there counting hats on the red side, and I see a flag out. You are correct. They had uh, too many men on the field there. So they're going to repeat third down here. So there was too many men out there for the Vikings. Uh, they were about ready to move the sticks there, and I saw the ref uh, counting hats, and uh, Lakota was pointing around, and Looks like that uh, number came up to 12. East has to capitalize on the Princeton mistakes. Uh, Princeton's the type of team that isn't as disciplined as some others, and uh, if East can take advantage of those penalties and those mistakes, and here's their first opportunity to see if they can uh, stop that. Now that was a was that a 15? Absolutely, that uh, that was uh, a 15-yard penalty. So that couldn't have been too many men on the field there. We're going to reset our uh, chain gang over there. So it must have been some type of maybe unsportsman. I'm not for sure, but definitely uh, Princeton came out with a 15-yard penalty there. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, not sure what uh, what they called there. And uh, so, yeah, like you said, this is an opportunity to capitalize. As uh, MJ goes uh, in the shotgun, he's rolling around. He throws a nice ball up the middle. What a grab, Ken, right there on third and long, 15. And he fires one right up to about the 33-yard line. We're going to get another look at this one, Ken. D'Angelo Foster climbs the ladder to catch this ball. Horton throws a nice hard ball, and D'Angelo Foster has to go up. Two hands, brings it down. Right between a bunch of Thunderhawk defenders there. So uh, it's going to be a first down for the Vikings there. And so MJ's back, a little, little razzle-dazzle. Uh, coming around the left-hand side. Go right back to Foster there on the end around. And Foster was brought down by Hayden King again. Um, and Adam Hundemer also on the tackle. Look forward to hearing his name quite a bit tonight there, uh, Ken, a big defensive lineman for the Hawks. Well, and he's lined up against uh, Paris Johnson, so that's going to be just an incredible matchup. Two guys that are going on to play college football head-to-head -head here in a high school game, and that'll, that'll be a fun matchup to watch. Should be fun to watch. So MJ takes a shotgun, goes right up the middle on a quarterback sneak, gets about three or four yards. He'll do that several times a game. Uh, look for him to do that about 10 to 15 times today where he takes the direct snap and, and runs up the middle there, almost like a wildcat. He's, he is an extra running back for Princeton, the way so they run their offense. 
Looks like he picked up about four yards, so it's second and six, uh, almost to midfield. Princeton's lines back up again in the shotgun. They got wide right and left. Empty backfield for Horton. Out of the reach uh, of the receiver. Uh, Dorian Durham was the intended receiver there by uh, MJ. Uh, that ball didn't look so great coming off his hand there. He probably would like that one back. Looked like he had a receiver open. Yeah, Durham was open. There wasn't, uh, East tends to play off on coverage. They tend to contain their receivers and give them a little cushion there. They try to avoid the yards after catch. And Durham was definitely open. Horton just seemed to miss him on that. Uh, it doesn't happen often with Horton, but, but he missed him on that one. So empty backfield again in the shotgun. Three right, one and left, and uh, looks like we've uh, got jump there. Got movement early on the Vikings, so that's going to cost him. So that's a false start on the offensive lineman. Called it on the line. Looked like the receiver moved also. Uh, either way, it's going to push the Vikings back to a third and 11 situation. So here again, Ken, another opportunity for the Hawks to capitalize on a mistake by the Vikings. You know, they had uh, third and 15 before, and they executed. Now they're at third and 11. So here's an opportunity for East to shut down the Vikings and uh, get a turnover here, uh, make them punt. See if their corners can step up here for the Hawks, make a play. So got one in the backfield. Looked like somebody moved early again here on this one. And I got whistles and flags again, Ken. That's what the Vikings can't have happen to them if they want to move the ball forward. They're, they're going to be penalized a couple times. And from what we've seen in Princeton, it, it semi implodes them a little bit. It, uh, the problems tend to compound themselves when Princeton gets a couple penalties on them. So that one actually uh, ended up being on the defense, which is interesting why they blew the play dead. Um, <laughs> But uh, what uh, Princeton lost on the last penalty, they got right back here. So um, not too for sure why they uh, blew that dead and wasn't a free play. But now it's back to third and six uh, right from almost midfield again. Horton's so em the empty backfield. Yep, empty backfield again. TJ's going to look over for a change in the uh, play here. He's got trips right, two left. Here comes the rush. He's flushing him out. He's on the move. Oh, Boom. Big hit. Wow. Number 22, Michael Howard. Michael Howard. There's that uh, senior leader we saw come out of the locker room. Came from the linebacker spot. We're going to watch this again here. There's where TJ gets flushed out, and he's got nowhere to go. Kids, that is a textbook tackle right there, Ken. Good you form, no intent to harm, just a... Solid waist tackle and, and brought him down. Yep, hit him hard with the shoulder and uh, then just takes him to the ground. So East is going to get the ball back here after the punt. Prince is going to take a timeout to make sure everybody's on the same page on special teams. But beautiful play by Michael Howard stepping up. Yep, exactly what we said, taking advantage of that situation, even though they gave him that five yards back. And uh, it was only third and six. And uh, with good motor skills that TJ has, you know, you got to be careful with him picking that up. And uh, Howard stepped up and closed the door quick, forcing this punt. And uh, like you said, too, the uh, Vikings weren't uh, all together there on that special team. So that's an early timeout uh, in the game that they may want later on before the half. It's a seven-minute possession for Princeton. They had the ball for half of the first quarter so far, which isn't typically their style. They usually like to strike and strike quickly. Uh, but that bodes in East's favor to uh, stretch the game out, make it a little shorter of a game, less possessions. Yep, as you mentioned, uh, Ken, there's uh, 7.35 left in the first quarter, and uh, the Vikings are in punt formation. Corey Dick back to receive for the Thunderhawks. That's a low punt. Gets a big bounce, and um, nothing bouncing Corey's way for a return. There's a kid who, who's had some good returns and, and called back, and... When he gets a chance, there always seems to be a flub punt that uh, he can't get up underneath or, or get over or bouncing around to, to get the return. So, Thunderhawks get the ball as we see our band fire up the crowd. Mark Krzyzewski will be at quarterback here. Uh, Dave, I was watching Mark the last couple of weeks when he was not in the game. He was the first one to congratulate the linemen for their blocks, all the running backs for their runs. It was very impressive to see. Uh, senior leader, uh, not you know, take starting positions taken away, but he played the part of, of so humble and so uh, 
Such a leader. And that's what you want to awesome see out of those seniors as he gets up underneath center, uh, calls the play here, has a pitch out to the left-hand side. Uh, that's to uh, Corey Dick, I believe. And as we just were talking about Corey on the uh, punt return, uh, Corey's no stranger in that backfield. That's where he was last year, and uh, he's been over on the defensive side filling in for, for injuries. And uh, as we mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast here, there's uh, some, some banged, banged up uh, players on the east side. One of those is uh, that running back Thornhill that uh, Corey is jumping over and taking, filling that spot. The return of Mike, uh, Max Michelson at safety allows Corey to be back in the backfield. Uh, and he's a good runner, so I, I know East is happy to have him in the background. There goes Kendrick in motion. So there goes Mark with a handoff up the middle. I believe that was Corey again. And uh, Corey Dick again, yes. So uh, he clicks off 10 on the first one. Looks like another six here, and uh, looks like Corey is picking up right where he left off from uh, his junior year last year. He's very familiar with the offense. He knows his role. Uh, they have him in the same spot he was at slot back. Got a, uh, some time as a junior at that position last year, and it's good to have him back in the backfield. Yeah, uh, the other two running backs here for East are both sophomores. Great talent, uh, but uh, again, sophomores nonetheless, and they've been doing the job, though. So here we go at uh, second and six. There's a little pitch out to one Charlie of those sophomores, Kendrick. Charlie Kendrick, and he goes forward, and it looks like he's going to be real close to a first down, and I see him waving Ken, so that's a first down he's Hawks. Got it. Here's Kendrick again. Watch him with the two hands on the ball. He really does a good job securing the ball. He knows that they're going to be in there grasping at it, and he, he holds on nicely as he gets tackled to the ground. Yep, yep. Great size for a sophomore there, uh, Charlie Kendrick. Uh, actually got the opportunity to sit with his grandparents last uh, weekend as we were watching here from the home game, and uh, it was a lot of fun uh, watching him play and then seeing them getting to see him play. So some young sophomore talent there. So there goes Mark with another pitch right back to Charlie. He's going down the left-hand side. He's got 10, 11. He's going to step out at about the 42-yard line for another first down. Exactly what East wanted to do, Dave. They, they're doing what they do best. They've seen a play that works. So we're going to get to see Charlie to again. There's that two-hand grab just like you said, Ken, and he's going down the left-hand side. And a smart player for, for only being a sophomore. Princeton knows that play is going to be coming, uh, and East knows they know. Uh, they just have to find a way to stop it. East is going to keep hammering it up the middle, up the middle, and they want to get three, four, five yards at a time. That time, 11, a little bonus. But they're hoping for three and four yards at a time. And here we go again as Mark goes under center. There's another pitch out to Corey Dick. He breaks one tackle, goes forward for a positive gain. That could have been a, a, a loss there. But, uh, again, there's some of that uh, senior knowledge and strength uh you know th this kid works hard in the off season he's he's in the weight room um and just a strong uh all-around athlete multi-sport athlete he plays basketball as well i'm not sure if he does anything in the spring but he is definitely built solid and he can take a hit he's going to take his share of hits this year so here we go uh second about nine on that short pickup as he has not gone to tavier lugo here yet in this game and i would imagine they would do so soon there's another handoff uh, on the right-hand side to Corey Dick. And he picks up another three or four yards. So it's going to bring up third and five. Dave, no reason to change what they're doing here. They're getting several yards at a time. They're definitely in four-down territory. Uh, so they're hoping to get another three or four yards on this play. And There's Coach Rick Haynes uh, sending the signals in to Mark Kazuski. Um, of course, you know, Rick loves this option here at East. He's been here for for a while and uh, is running the option for a long time. Gets his players to buy into it. The players know ball possession and time of possession is the most important stat. And as long as everyone believes in that and buys into it, it works well. So here we go, third and five, with about 350 left. Uh, Mark fakes one up the middle here. No, he gets that up Lugo. to Lugo. And there's Lugo's a big scrum. Moving. Looks like a little bit of rugby here and the East boys get behind and start pushing. And they may have got him right over First down, Thunderhawks. The, the Chalks for a first down. We're going to get another look at that scrum here, Ken. See the offensive line push Flau uh, Lugo here. Mark's in there pushing. Kendrick gets in there. Yep. Uh, Big number 57 is in uh, there Vince pushing. Vince Cornell pushing. So um, Lugo, to, again, there's another sophomore running back. He you know, took that first hit, didn't give up, kept those legs driving, and then waited for his uh, teammates to come help him out and push him forward. East wants to wear down this Princeton defensive line. 
there's some big boys there, and they're going to keep going at him, keep going at him, and a little confusion there is. Uh, Looks like we didn't uh, have the right personnel in there for East, and so Coach Rick Kane's had to burn a timeout not to get an illegal substitution on that. So, you know, that's... Uh, that, I'm that's sure BK uh, thought he was in there or somebody else uh, should have been in, and BK was covering that, but... Uh, right, it seems to be to somewhat of a confusion with this offense sometimes in that tight end position uh, where they're supposed to be, and... Um, and we've had some people changing out uh, between that, uh, BK there and, and uh, Owen Opp, uh, who's actually heard tonight as well. Um, and some, and he's been going to, I think he played a little offensive line, Owen did, and against the he Mason. Played, played some tight end. They had him switching jerseys. I don't know if you saw that yes. on the sideline, but Coach Koger and some others were switching his jersey on and off. And So uh, I think Coach Rick Haynes has got it all settled out there. He doesn't look too unhappy. Owen found himself in a sling. Uh, for the homecoming dance. He was my daughter's date for homecoming, and we took some pictures of him and his sling. There you go. Uh, this past weekend. But great kid, and, and he'll be back soon. They said he'll be back next week. Very good, very so good. He's so, with the first down here. Yep, Mark's going to the center. He uh, flips that over to Corey Dick. There's running room Corey's on the right room. hand side. He looks like he's going to burn them all right down the right hand touchdown, side for a touchdown. touchdown. Number four, Corey Dick back in the lineup. And he takes it to the house for six, Ken. Beautiful blocking. Beautiful blocking on the right end. We're going to see this again here. There's the Hawks congratulating him. He, they know he's been waiting and, and sniffing, being that senior, waiting for his turn. And here we go. Mark fakes it up the middle, passes over to uh, Corey, and Corey turns the Jets on. And uh, that's a little bit of that track paying off. Same play they've run over and over today so far. And Gavin Myers tacks on the extra point. And the Hawks go up 7 nothing. So the PAT's up and good. And uh, Gavin tacks on, as you said earlier, his kicks for cancer. And um, we're all for behind that. So uh, you keep kicking them through, kiddo. And we'll keep uh, praising you from up here in the booth. So uh, the Hawks are up 7 to nothing over the Princeton Vikings. Just short here of the first quarter with 3.08 left. It's got to uh, be a nice feeling, Dave, to run to the end zone 25 yards untouched. Uh, that, he didn't have to break any tackles. The, the line had Princeton going to the left side, and Corey just took it down the right side, head of steam, and his job became easy there when the line did their job. Absolutely. So the uh, East uh, kickoff team is getting huddled up here, getting their signals from their coach. And, uh, you know, back on uh, Corey, as, as he was filling a different role, as there was injuries, and he's a – multifaceted athlete and player. He was uh, also doing a whole lot of special teams too, kind of things you don't necessarily see on the stat sheet or even see as you're watching from long snapping. He was on the kickoff team. Um, you'll see him returning punts and kickoffs too. And so he's played an important role as he's been moving around in these first four games um, before he's gotten his opportunity here tonight to go back in the backfield and, and do what he loves as a running back. Clearly a team player. He stepped up and played defense. He's played defense before in junior high and his Tomahawk days. Uh, but he definitely, uh, that's not his, not where he wants to be as an athlete, but it, it's what he would do for the team. And the kind again, of some, would of, do anything for the some team. of that senior leadership, as you were talking about uh, with Mark, uh, when he lost the starting uh, role to a sophomore, but over on the sidelines cheering, filling his spot, doing the things he needs to do. So uh, here we go with the kickoff. Gavin knocks it down. Looks like that one might make its way into the end zone as well, and that's going to be a touchback as the same, right on the line. So. That is what East wants. They don't want Princeton to be able to make a return there. Yeah, they return guy number nine. If I remember correctly, uh, he's uh, up there in the stats on the uh, GMC um, for returns. That would be... Um, Bowers, number nine, Bowers. He's a junior out of Princeton uh, returning kicks. He's returned two kicks for Princeton this year, 51 yards total, uh, long of 31, 32. He's had two, two good kick returns. but So here we go for Princeton off to the right-hand side. There's a little bit of a hole. He's got a spot. He's going down the right-hand side, and he's turning on the burners. I don't think anybody's going to catch him, Ken. He's going to go the distance for a touchdown. Vikings. That's what uh, Princeton typically does. They're quick strike team, and MJ Horton has the wheels, and the Hawks could not catch him on the outside. 
So we're going to get another look at this one, Ken. There goes MJ, empty backfield. Nobody's back there. It's just him. Runs past Hundemer in the whole defensive backfield, and he has gone down the right-hand side like lightning into the end zone. Once he gets past Michelson, the safety, all he can, all Michelson can do is try and run and catch up to him. But Michelson gets blocked uh, there. I couldn't tell who that was for Princeton, but nice block and quick score for Princeton. Yep, quick that was answer. A nice big hole, and they uh, convert the PAT. So, in wow, less than uh, about uh, eight seconds, we uh, went from 7-0 to 7-7 in a hurry with 2:55 left in the first quarter. So East has to erase that from their memory. They have to think of this as a 0-0 game and make sure that they don't get distracted by the fact that Princeton answered them quickly. East has the ball, and they move the ball nicely against Princeton, and they just have to put their head down and keep doing what they do best. Absolutely, Ken. Uh, the Thunderhawks just got to figure this is just like the beginning of the game, 0-0. Get that taste out of their mouth right away and just move on. So there's a shot of the Princeton uh, kickoff team getting their instructions from their coach and uh, as we can hear in the background that is actually the Princeton band up here tonight as well a small group of the Princeton band you saw a little earlier shot of them uh, supporting their team on the road so that run was uh, Horton had another 80 yard run earlier in the season so that was not his longest it ties his longest but he's done that before East has to make sure they they know where he is and contains him well, we'll see if East can move the ball here, Dave, on their next possession. They moved it uh, nicely on the first possession. See what they can do here. So kicking off for the Vikings. Is that number 23, Hayden Cobb? Lined up, ready to go. And he has a Short little pick. pooch down to about the uh, 35 that East takes. Now that's going to be a late hit out of bounds, Dave. That's going to be 15 yards for the Hawks. Yep, there goes the uh, yellow hanky is out. And that's just a little lack of discipline there on the Vikings after a big run, getting them right back into the game. Coach Daniels for Princeton can't be happy with that play. No, so far, Ken, you know, the, uh, the Vikings have hurt themselves in this game with some crucial penalties, um, keeping the door open for the Thunderhawks, allowing them to stay in this game and as the referee just indicated there personal foul just like you called Ken that's Jack, gonna Jack Hartman just thrown to the ground after he uh, clearly out of bounds by several steps and in, in a second or two out of bounds tacking 15 on to that pooch kick that that looked like it turned out pretty well for Vikings it was a short return um, I don't think they wanted to go deep um, to the Hawks as I said, uh, we've had some success with the runbacks, uh, though that we've been penalized a few times too and negated a couple of big runbacks on the kickoff. So um, East comes out pretty well here on the 43-yard uh, line. They're going to come out in eye formation here. There's a flip to Corey Dick. He stiff arms somebody that was going to be, again, caught for a loss. Corey drags him back up to just about the line of scrimmage, it looks like, or maybe a one-yard loss. It's going to be second and 10 for the Hawks. Uh, Yep, looks like he was able to get right back to the line of scrimmage there, Ken. Flowers with the lead block there. Um, Lugo Flowers, uh, Lugo, with the lead block there. And uh, Corey just couldn't get to the outside. Yeah, he was trying and scrapping and stiff arming there and uh, took that load. So Mark's back under center. He gets grabbed there, flips it over to Corey. There's another stiff arm, goes out of bounds. Gain of about five on the play, five or six. Again, that's what East wants. They want about five or six yards at a time. They're happy with that. Good blocking up front. Mark, uh, Mark does a good job reading when to pitch. Uh, you'll see him keep the ball more in the second half than he does in the first half. Um, it's kind of a, a setup thing that uh, they teach. Um, but a good, couple good reads there. And then East has pretty much stayed with that pitch play. So Jack Hartman comes in at wide receiver. Kazuski goes back underneath center. Looks back, has a quick snap right over to number 14. He breaks a tackle. He's going down the left-hand side, dragging and pulling, and finally gets rustled down about the 26-yard line. So Beautiful that's going to be a by big first down for East Ken. 
Hartman showing the good hands and the good awareness of getting the yards after catch. Mark puts that on the money and Hartman reaches out. Gets about 10 yards after the catch. So that was a nice little play call by the coach, Rick Haynes, with a little throw there by Mark. And um, I don't know if that catches the Vikings off kilter there because East doesn't throw much. But here we come right back to Charlie, yeah, right open right down the middle. That one. Touchdown. Dave, they were not expecting that one. It's very rare to see the Thunderhawks pass twice in a row. Just as we were saying that uh, we're going to get another look at here, Ken. Mark drops back. Kendrick comes out of the backfield pretty much unguarded. And all he has to do is catch and waltz into the end zone. Perfect three-step drop, uh, staying within the confines of what Mark can do. He throws a nice ball down there to Charlie. And uh, like you said, wide open, straight into the end zone. And we were just saying right before that snap how unlikely for the Thunderhawks to be passing the ball, catching the Vikings off guard. And they got him for six right there. And uh, Well, you'd have to imagine Princeton knows you're going to throw at one point sometimes. And when the Hawks did, they probably let their guard down and didn't realize the Hawks were going to come right back to a second pass. So uh, Gavin gets the PAT again. Uh, some more kicks for cancer right there for Gavin. And uh, East answers real quick, just like you said, Ken. They need to race it out of their mind. I think they just did, making this score 14-7 to with 136 left in the first quarter. So David got 21 points uh, in the first quarter already, so I don't know if I have a hat to eat here, but my uh, prediction of a low-scoring time of possession game may go out the window here with these teams... Uh, striking like they have in the last six minutes here. Had three scorers in the last six minutes. And makes for a very entertaining game so far. See if uh, Myers can kick it in the end zone for the third time. He's shown his leg uh, capacity here so far, and I'm sure the Hawks are just fine with having the Vikings start the ball at the 20-yard line each time. Yep, the uh, Hawks are lined up there, and then Gavin t tees it up, uh, takes his steps. The Vikings are ready to go. And, um, yeah, both of these teams, uh, you know, their, their average scores based on the way they are heading tonight here in the first quarter are way ahead of schedule. So Princeton so will have a chance to return this one. Oh, goes through the hands of... Uh, the returner into the end zone. So again, the Hawks do not let Princeton have a kickoff return. Again, that was number eight uh, for the Vikings. Um, trying to keep that ball from going into the end zone. He's standing right in front of the goal line, Ken, trying to, trying to catch that without getting a, a touchback so he can get a return in. And uh, that one just squibbed through his fingers and, and – Went on into the end zone for a touchback, so the Vikings will start again at the 20-yard line. Hawks with the lead, 14-7. See if they can uh, prevent Princeton from having that quick strike play that they are definitely looking so toward. So empty backfield. Doing. MJ goes, rolls right. He's going to go throw left. He's wide open. He's got uh, 82 po burnt down the left-hand side, and he steps out right about the 38-yard line. Kyle Poppy on the coverage for the Hawks. Yeah, went really over his head, right into the hands of uh, Rodney Harris Jr. So we're going to get another look at this, Ken. Uh, Horton has a nice touch on this ball. Well the receiver gets a couple steps ahead, and, and Horton just drops it in. Well-designed play where 87 gets behind Poppy, and uh, Poppy's lucky he was able to recover and, and, and get him to step out because there was nothing but green in the end zone in front of him. So you got one set in the backfield with MJ. He claps twice, looks right over to the uh, sidelines to get a change of play. He's got trips right. And he'll hand that off up the middle to number seven. It's going to be Thomas Boyd. He's a, Thomas uh, Boyd. They're saying the ball's out. Hawks East is it. saying they got the ball. I haven't seen a motion yet, but looks like uh, the referees are pointing that way. We're going to get a replay here. A little slow-mo we're going to see. Number seven goes in there. It's a run by Boyd. and Looks like uh, Hundemer with the big hit, uh, pushing number ball. 77 into the runner. I didn't quite see when the ball popped out, but Michael Howard wound up with it. 
And the officials give the ball to the Thunderhawks. That's a huge break for the Thunderhawks. Huge break, as you say there, Ken. Um, I saw Hundermer pushing number 77, uh, Johnson Jr., uh, the young man that's uh, signed with Ohio State into the ball carrier, and I don't know if that broke it loose, but uh, Howard came out of there, first and 10 Hawks. As they go to work, Mark flips it over to Corey Dick again. Corey picks a pop, stays in bounds, gets another extra one or two yards there. He just kept moving, kept moving, moving, stops the clock by going out of bounds. Was hit there by uh, number four for Princeton, Elijah. Eberhardt, uh, Bowling Green commit, my alma mater, Dave. There you go. There you go. Yeah, uh, the Vikings have a couple of commits already uh, early in the season here to some D1 programs. We'll try to get those in as we can, but as Mark lines back up, flips it back over to the inside, that's Charlie right up the middle. Kendrick has a, a lot of running room there. Big run. He brings the ball down to about the 33-yard line, so that's about a 24-yard run we're going to see it again charlie goes right up the middle he's just looking for green pushing people away and uh finally somebody trips him up or again charlie might have been seeing the end zone again there because there wasn't much in front of him but green after that uh viking got a little hand on his foot there to trip him up finally down to the 33 yard line so the clock's running um east does have timeouts so they need to protect the clock and get this uh ball snapped first quarter so hand up up the middle there. It's going to be Tavier Lugo. So uh, Ken, as you uh, reminded me there, we are in the first quarter, so East is in no hurry uh, to get this in there. So they're going to not use those timeouts. But uh, hey, uh, I agree with you, Dave. It's been such high scoring that uh, it feels been like a lot of excitement quarter. here. I would imagine. You know, I, so they've got Second plenty of time to flip the field and uh, head the other way. They'll be glad to do that um, as we end the first quarter here with the East Thunderhawks 14 and the Princeton Vikings 7. Westchester has grown from seeds first sown by farmers and tradespeople, drawn here by the beauty of the land and the promise of opportunity. Westchester provided these early settlers with the chance to thrive and prosper. They built homes, schools, businesses, and with it, they built a sense of community. Today, Westchester is more sophisticated and polished, ideally situated with highway access, exceptional schools, beautiful neighborhoods, and welcoming neighbors. It may not be a small town anymore, but neighborhood block parties, school programs, thriving businesses, and community events remind us that Westchester is our hometown. Westchester welcomes everyone, I see the potential this township has for me. The heart of our community lives inside the people who are making their best life in one of America's best places to live. I have spent my entire life living in Westchester. It means less about having a house and more about feeling at home. Whether you're a small business or Fortune 500 company, Westchester rolls out the red carpet to every business. Westchester is what it is on purpose, a place of promise and opportunity, a place where families grow and businesses prosper. Proactive, collaborative, enthusiastic, welcoming. We are live back in action as the uh, Hawks get a quick handoff to uh, Charlie on the left-hand side. Here starting the second quarter. Kendrick takes it ahead for about three yards. It's going to be third and two for the Thunderhawks. Again, they are in four-down territory here. They're at the 30-yard line. Two plays to get the final two yards here for the first down. A very entertaining first quarter with three scores. Uh, one quick score by Princeton and back-to-back -back passes for the Thunderhawks that got them in the end zone. So now we're heading south uh, here. Krasuski uh, gets underneath, passes it, or tips it off to uh, Charlie there on the pitch. He's going to have enough uh, for the first down. Looks like he definitely has enough for the first down. So Hawks continue to move the ball down the field methodically like the way they, they enjoy doing it. They, it's what they want to do. Time of possession, very important. 
And Hawks continue to just march down the field. Pitch left, pitch right, pitch right, pitch left. If it works for them, they're going to keep doing it. Yeah, they don't seem to be mine running uh, that ball. Um, you know, the Vikings do have a pretty decent size, as you can see, number 99 there, that nose tackle for the Princeton Vikings. Uh, they're going right at him, hitting those gaps as uh, Corey Dick goes in motion. And he'll hand it straight up the middle to Lugo, I think that was. Tavier Lugo keeps his feet moving, bowls forward for about three yards. Again, there's a good shot of that defensive line for the Vikings. Devin Green is working hard there. Uh, Devin Green and Evan Yaki there, 72 and 56, are working tremendously hard against that Princeton line. They're, they have them pound for pound, and it's going to be a battle in the trenches there, as, as they say, with, with uh, Princeton's defensive line, East offensive line. He seems to be winning that battle, though. They seem to be pushing him in the direction that East uh, is moving the ball. Exactly. As Mark gets back up underneath center here, Corey Dick goes in motion. Mark's going to keep Mark's it this time. keep it and uh, gets a big pop right there by number 19. I think that's the defensive end coming across. So Krasuski goes down the left-hand side. Picks up another first down. Number 19 for Princeton, Darian Henry. He is another Ohio State commit. And he's another one of those on the on the line. That's a, He's a big kid, too, at 6'5", uh, going about 260. And, Ken, you took me right where I was going to go next on that offensive line for the Hawks, uh, doing a great job up there, shouting out to them as, as they are definitely moving uh, forward for these running backs uh, to get some space against the Vikings. And there goes another quick handoff to the left-hand side to Lugo. Got some laundry on the field. Not sure if it's going to be a hold on the Thunderhawks or potentially a face mask against Princeton. Go to our official here. A little discussion. So, so again, there's the offensive line uh, moving the defensive line making some space for the running backs. So that'll be half the distance to the goal. Going to give the Hawks an extra five yards and move them first and goal at the five. Student section fired up over that. Looks like they're throwing out some T-shirts there, yeah, Ken. That's what they're getting fired up about. Is yeah. Those T-shirts going up in the stands. See the arms of our cheerleaders there. Uh, Throwing it up in the stands there. So the Hawks are set with first and goal. And uh, down inside the two, it looks like. There goes Lugo straight off the left-hand tackle off of Yaki. He's in the end zone. And touchdown. he's got a touchdown. Touchdown, Thunderhawks. The, the, the players were reacting, but the referees didn't have their hands up yet. So, uh, But the boys knew that it was in there. Touchdown, Hawks. And... Uh, Looks like they forgot about that long run down the sideline by MJ. So here's a good look at uh, nice power running right there by Lugo. Protects the ball, dives forward, knows where that goal line is, and just falls across. Yep, got that shoulder down and just drives straight into the end zone for a touchdown. So here goes Gavin with the PAT up and good. Myers puts the Hawks ahead by 14. Hawks so. with three touchdowns. Here early in the in the second quarter already. Second quarter, but feels like uh, later though, right? <laughs> it's so much scoring in this game, 21 to seven. They have what? to be incredibly pleased with how they're moving the ball. Uh, Princeton's only had the one big play. Yep, absolutely. With 9:08 in the second, uh, up 21-7. Um, you know, last week they scored 21 points for the whole game. So um, the Hawks got to be happy. Coach Haynes has got to be happy. So uh, here's the thing, though, is you can't drop your guard. There's a lot of football yet to play here. Well, and Princeton has the capability of scoring quickly. And As the Hawks know that, so they have to maintain their composure, keep playing good defense, and keep pounding the ball offensively. They're, they're not going to be in any hurry to... Uh, to As have we, a quick strike. As we saw that clearly, Ken, uh, by the Vikings, one play... 80 yards, touchdown, and a real big hurry right after the Thunderhawks scored their first touchdown. So so in contrast, Dave, last week the Hawks had seven points in the first half. And now we've got 21 in this game here. So big difference, real big difference here tonight. Uh, 
looks like they got some chemistry. Things are going well. The game plan so far looks like it's working for the Thunderhawks as they line up to kick this off. This will be Meyer's first kick going north to south, and we'll see if uh, the trajectory changes. Another big kick, and this time Princeton will have a chance to return. Yep, it'll be down about the nine-yard line. He takes it there, brings it up the middle, about to the 28-yard line. So a little bit into the wind that way, Ken, as you mentioned, uh, going north to south. Uh, not nearly as deep. He loses a few yards on that. That lets Princeton get a good run back there. Uh, that was number nine for the Princeton Vikings. Leroy Bowers on the return, he's a junior. And uh, he brings them up to the 28 yard line. Myers kick has gone to the uh, same player all four times. So East clearly uh, has a scouting report on the other return man for Princeton. I didn't quite get the number there, but uh, Coach Brady knows what he's uh, doing on special teams, former Bengal. Uh, he instructs the kicker where to kick the ball. So here go the Vikings, uh, first and 10, empty backfield. Quarterback's going to keep it off to the left-hand side. Not a whole lot going there, and the Hawks swallow that up. East line, the good stop there. Aaron Sharp in on the tackle. Hayden King comes up from the linebacker spot. Hayden King's having a nice game so far, Dave. He's got he, some good reads on the ball and, and gets his head on the ball there. Absolutely, Ken. Uh, He's, uh, I think, leading that defense right now in, in tackles tonight. So uh, he's uh, following the ball pretty well. Hawks defense looking for a stop here. It's going to be second and eight. Princeton with three receivers wide to the right. Here we go with the one in the backfield. It's going to be a keeper. And uh, that nice looks. Nice big tackle. That was number three. Gerald Smith, linebacker for the Hawks. Stepped right up into that, was not fooled at all by the Vikings quarterback keeper there. So It's a relatively new position for Jordell. He uh, played linebacker a little bit on JV last year, and he's getting a little more time here with varsity, and nice hit there, nice containment, nice hit. Linebackers for Easter seem to be spying MJ Horton. So they have to keep their, their head on him because they know he runs the ball. Vikings got third and eight. They got trips right. They got one in the backfield. He's rolling right. He's looking. He's going to keep that. The Hawks weren't con confused by that at all. And the line linebackers short. came up to take that. We're going to get another look. Here's the John running Jones back stays back to block. Bam, bam. Linebacker safety's all coming up. Josh Jones and Michael Howard in on that tackle there. So something keyed off the Hawks that that was not going to be a pass play and that was going to be a quarterback keeper. And, uh, and they're going to force the uh, Vikings to punt once again. They ate that up, uh, holding them to, uh, to a four-yard gain to make it fourth and four and a punt. So Thunderhawks coaches have to be pleased with the beginning of this first half here. Have to be very pleased on this. So the uh, Vikings punter is back. Corey Dick is back to receive. He gets it up in the air, um, short kick, so Corey's got to let it go, nice and they're going to get a Vikings there. bounce. Hawks are going to take over at the 15-yard line. Nice punt, nice bounce, and good decision by Corey Dick just to let the nature take its course with that ball and let it roll around instead of trying to pick it up on the run. So that looks like the kick was by Jason Miller, number 36, by the Vikings. The East with the ball and a 14-point lead, Dave. What should we expect? Uh, I think more of the same. You know, it's worked so far to this point. Uh, Coach Haynes is a creature of habit, I would say. So uh, I think you're going to see a whole more big dose of the option coming at you. So I hope the Vikings are ready because I think they're going to get a, a mixture of a lot of run coming their way to close out this first half. So the key point is not to turn it over for the Hawks. They need to maintain the ball in their possession and Def see if they can run the clock Definitely. Down there. there goes Mark uh, uh, looking right to pitch to Corey Kepik and went up the middle. Looks like Princeton defense did a good job anticipating the pitch there. And Mark has to be careful about that to make right. sure he's not pitching it if the uh, well, defender has a hand in the passing lane if in, in basketball terminology, if I could use that uh, analogy there. Well, just as you said, this is not the place or the time on the field to turn the ball over. So the Hawks need to be smart right here. Hold on to the ball, move the chains, 
flip the field and uh, either take it in uh, for some more score before the half or at least flip the field and, and make Princeton go a long way before the half. So there's a pitch around, it looks like, to Charlie. Just going to get back to the original line there. Kendrick was hit pretty much as he got to the line. Princeton defense uh, made a nice play there. So we're going to be third in about three yards. So this becomes a pretty good big play for the Hawks here in this first half. Just as you said, it's uh, a first down, keeps the chains moving and the clock running, which is what East wants. Um, and a punt would uh, be exactly what the Vikings want to get the ball back before the half. Kazuski goes underneath. He flips it out over to Corey Dick. Corey's got some running room on the right-hand side. Nice he gets the, the first outside, down. Up for the first down. Beautiful play. Stays in bounds. The clock will stop shortly to move the chains, though. We're going to get another look at that. There's Mark holding on to the ball to the right second. Flips it over to Corey. Corey goes down. Mark's just past the chains. Mark's taking a couple hits here right after he pitches the ball, and, and he knows that. He's expecting that. Uh, it's part of the quarterback position and the option. You are a, a fourth running back there. Yep, he so. does a great job with that. Like you said, he's a senior. He's been here, knows the system. You know, he uh, understands the option of what uh, Coach Rick Haynes wants, and uh, he goes down the line, holds that ball to the last second, and flips it to those running backs. So here we go again. Mark uh, hands it off right up the middle. I think that's to Lugo. Lugo gets about one yard. That's going to bring up second down. Lugo's going to run right off the center here. There's another look at it right there. Not a whole lot there. Number 19 with the stop by the Princeton Vikings. Darian Henry, Ohio State. So they actually give him two yards on that, Ken. So it brings up second and eight. Most importantly, though, the clock's running, which is uh, in the favor of the Thunderhawks. Thunderhawks uh, want to use as much of that 40-second play clock as possible each time. Right now it's at eight, and Mark's going to let it tick down a couple more before he snaps it. There goes Charlie in motion. Corey goes to the right side. He's got a hole. He breaks a tackle. He's got nothing but green in front of him. He's at the 40, 35, 30-yard 30 line, gets cut from behind inside the 30-yard line. Fabulous run by Corey Dick. Kept his feet moving, looked like he was going to go down, and did not go down. Here's going to be a great replay for us, Ken. There's a fake to the left of Lugo. Corey goes right, breaks one, two tackles. Then he's off to the races, and uh, nobody's in front of him, so somebody better catch him from behind. And uh, number four put the Jets on and caught back up with Corey. Here we go again. You can see. Beautiful block here by John McElhaney. Yep to get Corey the extra steps he needs on the outside. And that was Eberhardt, uh, the cornerback from the Vikings, that caught up with him and pulled him down just inside the 30-yard line. Mark keeps the ball, goes left-hand side, nothing looking there, picks up a couple of yards, and he'll go down. Ball security, just fine with the Hawks. They got the two, three yards they needed. Yep, the ball's secure now. Now you're, you're thinking uh, six, maybe definitely three here, right? Short of the half, um, plenty of time. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the East still has their two timeouts, so uh, they can pretty much do what they want to do. I think the playbook's open to them right here. Dave, great job on the line there, blocking downfield. Not only blocking at the line, but that second tier of block also uh, has really gotten the Hawks some extra yards here, especially on yep, that last play. There goes play. Mark. He's looking for a pass. Oh, that just fell apart real quick. The pocket folded there. Uh, that did not look like a... Uh, that was a good decision by Mark. You don't want to take the chance here of throwing the ball downfield to get it potentially intercepted. Yeah, that you play, are relatively in field goal range. so That play did not look like it started off right. There's a fake to Lugo. Charlie's back blocking. Receiver uh, was covered, and that's a good decision by Mark. You, yep. you take the sack. You don't turn the ball over. Uh, uh, that's the most important thing here. Absolutely. It only loses a few yards, so it's third and ten. So, you know, they're looking for positive yards here, stay in field goal range. There's a handoff right up the middle to uh, Lugo. Uh, Mark took a big hit there. You talk about hit. No, Mark did not get that ball off to Lugo. Looks like he kept it there. He kept it. Wasn't too for sure. I thought he had handed that off. And that's going to be a loss, which is exactly what the Hawks did not want. They and bring up fourth down. At the 29-yard line, so they're looking at a 46-yard field goal, which I don't 
think is in Myers' range. He yeah, should have been practiced, but I, I don't know if we'll take the chance here. Uh, I, I think they'd rather I don't take Princeton go the length of the field if, if they have to turn it over on downs here. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit here, Ken, understanding uh, as the Hawks were moving the ball well, time was on their side. They had the two timeouts. Stick with what got you there. They dropped back for a, for a pass play that that didn't go well and fell apart. And like you said, Mark didn't throw the ball away for an interception and kept it and lost some yardage. And I'm not too for sure what happened on that play because um, from our vantage point, it sure looked like he, uh, he gave it to the fullback up the middle, but he kept it. Coach Haynes is going to take a timeout here to make sure everybody's on the same page. So it's fourth and 11 with uh, two minutes to go in the second quarter before the half. You're too close to the end zone to punt, but you're too far away for a field goal, Dave. So they're they're in a position where they most likely have to go for it on on fourth and eleven. If you choose to punt the ball and it goes in the end zone, it's only a net of nine yards down the field. So it doesn't make sense to do that. Absolutely agree with you there, Ken. So we'll see what uh, Coach Haynes dials up here with fourth and eleven. Um, you know the Vikings are hungry to get that ball back in their hands before the half. They still got a timeout left, and uh, like you said, they can strike quick and they would love to get points here before the before the half and I'm sure East would like to tack on at least three more at minimum before the half here too. So here we go, fourth and 11 from the 29 yard line. Kazuski's in the shotgun. He's looking back to throw the ball. Waits in that pocket a little long. He's gonna take off and uh, get positive yardage but uh, not quite enough to get the first down. So East is gonna turn this over on downs down around the 21 yard line it looks like. Gives the Vikings a minute 52 to try and march down the field 80 yards. Now Dave, we've seen them march down in eight seconds. Uh, so East defense has to make sure they don't give up a big play here. Cannot fall asleep here with a minute 52 left and a timeout by the Vikings. And so the Hawks uh, drop back into a pass there, fourth 11, kind of forced the issue on themselves. Uh, Put, them in their, put themselves in that situation and uh, the nothing was going pocket folded. Mark had to bail out and did not get enough to pick it up. So it's gonna uh, be a screen pass there, quick screen for a couple yards and the ball out of bounds, stop the clock. Yep, uh, Vikings uh, look like they were playing that conservative with a quick screen to step out. Uh, Daniel Little Foster with the catch. I almost wonder if he was looking for something else there off, off of that screen. So we'll see if they were setting something up for the future here, but uh, Vikings. Almost looked like a backwards pass that Foster was going to go and uh, throw the ball down the field. I don't know if it was backwards or not. We don't have the best yeah, angle he here. Had, but. He had trips left there, and guys were going downfield, but uh, East broke through there. Here it looks like the same exact play, but he's looking downfield. He's going to bail out of the pocket, almost get knocked down. He stays on his feet, breaks a tackle, helmet comes off, and uh, they wrestle him down just short of the line of scrimmage. Horton's going to have to come out for a play, Dave, with the helmet coming off, uh, regardless if it's intentional or not. He yeah, you see him running play. off the field there as his uh, helmet popped off um, on third down and 11. So we will third and 10 is what the official scoreboard says. So, um, yeah, they're going to have to bring in the uh, substitute quarterback. Looks Looking like at the stats, he is very efficient as a quarterback. He's back in the shotgun, not holding back, and he throws right away downtown, but a little too far with Poppy on the coverage over there. So that's uh, what the Princeton Vikings think of their backup quarterback. No, no harm, no foul. Just step right in, get in the shotgun, and throw a deep ball. He has the stats. I was looking at their quarterback ratings. He... Uh, he has a quarterback rating of, I'm not seeing it right here, 212.7. And that was about to, a 41, uh, 76. 41, 42 yard pass he just threw and uh, just missed his, his receiver just a little long. And if they would have hooked up with that, they would have been in business with a minute 22. So they're going to punt away. Uh, punt gets out deep. Uh, Corey runs away from it. Little. Sh Short midfield, let it bounce once. The uh, Vikings get uh, their bounce the way they want it to go, pick up a few extra yards. and That was not the possession that the Princeton Vikings wanted, Dave. 
No, not at all. Three quick plays, quarterback comes out on third down, you throw a couple passes, you get a screen, step right out of bounds, and a couple incompletes there. Right, and now the Hawks have the ball back with a uh, minute eight left and still have that timeout. So um, very doable to get this thing down into um, field goal range. See if they try and move the ball down the field or think that they're content going in the locker room up 14. Looks like they are going to line up for an offensive play. Mark gets under center, looks uh, hands off to Lugo up the middle. Uh, he's fighting for yardage. Gets one, maybe two. And uh, in the past, we've seen the Hawks be conservative at this point. Uh, I'd be surprised if they run a play, but it looks like they're they're not in uh, well, quote unquote halftime victory formation yet. Nope, uh, and they don't look like they're in too much of a hurry. It looks like the. Uh, Play clock is a little ahead of the game clock, so they're going to have to run at least one more play here. Princeton does have a timeout left. They could choose to, to force East to run another play, but Mark's going to let the play clock go down to as close to zero as he can, and he is going to take a knee there, Dave. He is going to take a knee and run this first half out. With Both teams go to the locker room, and East has to be incredibly pleased with how they're playing with a 21-7 lead here at halftime. Absolutely, Ken. Uh, there you see the score on the screen, and uh, at the Hawks' nest, uh, we'll be back for the second half. Gentlemen, welcome back to Lakota East Hawk Nest, where the Lakota East Thunderhawks are facing the Princeton Vikings, and the Hawks are up 21 to 7 going into the second half. Everything went the Hawks' way in the first half. They moved the ball on offense. They had 14 first downs. Princeton had four. East has 257 yards, uh, 32 snaps for East, and only 16 for Princeton. Yeah, Ken, the, the stats uh, go right along with uh, what's going on on the scoreboard tonight. And uh, as you said, the uh, Hawks are definitely dominating on the offensive side of the ball. So Princeton has 169 yards. 80 of those came on one play. Yeah, they had a quick strike right after the Hawks scored their first touchdown, went up 7 to nothing, kicked off, and the Vikings got the ball first and 10 at the 20-yard line, and the quarterback, uh, MJ, went 80 yards right down the right-hand side and nobody could catch him to tie this ball game up 7-7. Seven to seven. Then right after that, uh, the Hawks uh, forgot that quickly and uh, marched right down the field and, and pumped the ball into the end zone with a strike uh, to Charlie Kendrick down the center for 14-7. Uh, uh, and then right after that, a nice long sweep down the left-hand side to Corey Dick, a returning senior running back who's uh, been pushed around in the... Uh, team with injuries and his versatility to fill in and now he's in the backfield and he brings that score to 21 to 7. Corey Dick has 119 yards on 10 carries and that's a great first time in the backfield this season. That's what the Hawks offensive coach is looking for him to do. He's a dynamic player. He runs hard. He has a head of steam and they truly missed that uh, senior leadership in the backfield. Yep as we see the uh, teams warming up here there's the Princeton Vikings getting ready for the second half. And we know that they're a quick strike offense, so this game is definitely nowhere near over, even though the score is 21 to seven. Hawks have to play the game as if it were a tie game. They have to come out of the locker room. I'm sure Princeton made some adjustments to the pitch play. East has to do what they continue to do. They have to do it well. They have to continue to be mistake free. They didn't turn the ball over. Only time uh, they gave up a possession was on downs, on a fourth and 11. Uh, late in the second quarter. Other than that, they have not punted the ball. 
uh, they've scored on, on their possessions. Yep, and uh, just talking about punts, the uh, Princeton Vikings have punted twice. And uh, again, uh, with no returns, uh, some short uh, high kicks that the Hawks uh, returner, Corey Dick, again, could not get under. And they got some uh, Viking bounces to, to stretch the field a little bit. But uh, on the defensive side of the ball, Ken, uh, we've got some uh, tackle leaders here with Hayden King. Uh, with three tackles, Adam Hundemer with uh, two, and Michael Howard with two. And, um, Michael you know, Howard's two. One of them was quite memorable on his hit on MJ Horton coming around the outside. Uh, textbook tackle and just flattened MJ. Absolutely, and shut down a drive that made the Vikings punt that ball back over to the Thunderhawks. And on the uh, other side, same way with the Vikings, uh, John Harris with uh, five tackles, Leroy Bowers with five tackles. And Darren Henry with four tackles. Um, not too much else to talk about on the Vikings side of the ball other than MJ Horton there um, with a total of 91 yards out of that 169. And like you said, 80 of that came on that one play. Princeton has to clean up some of their penalties. They had four penalties in the first half, 37 yards. And that hurt them a few times. They were toward third and short, and it gave them third and long, and the East uh, Thunderhawks were able to stop them on those third and long. So Princeton has to clean up some of those mistakes. So here we go with number 23, Hayden Cobb, ready for the kickoff by the Vikings. He kicks it deep. Uh, looks like uh, number 83, and Corey Dick is back there. 83 takes the ball. He's going up the right-hand side. He finds some space. He brings it up to the 35-39 yard line. That's Nick Rabin for the Thunderhawks. He is a sophomore. Running back on the roster. Yes, Nick Rab Rabin comes up with a with a big return. Welcome um, to Friday night, young man. Yes, absolutely. Um, again, uh, talking about the returners back there, Corey Dick, always a, a threat. So it looks like they kicked away from him and got surprised by uh, that sophomore uh, returner, Nick Rabin. So yeah, hats off to him. Welcome to Friday Night Lights, Nick. Thunderhawks going to look to Pound the ball up the middle a couple more times, see if they can control some time of possession. They out-possessioned Princeton 15 minutes to eight minutes in the first half. Yep, as Mark hands off up the middle to Lugo with the double set back, uh, he gains a couple and uh, right back to where they left off at uh, running the option and pounding the ball up the middle. Looks like number 94 for Princeton had a little stinger there, hopping around. That's senior Todd, Todd Harding. Todd Harding on the... Uh, defensive tackle position. And as we stated earlier in the first half, uh, Ken, that's a, a, a thick, stout defensive line there for the Princeton Vikings. And uh, same on the other side of the ball for the Hawks, uh, a good, strong, big offensive line that's been doing their job so far tonight. East line has worn them down. It's gonna be a handoff up the middle to Lugo. He's gonna pick up a couple again and bring up third down. Third and about six for the Hawks from the 44. So there's a good shot of some of those uh, linemen for East that have been pushing that line of scrimmage, uh, advancing the ball for the uh, the running backs, making big holes there. Got John McElhaney, got Evan Yaki. You've got Davin Green. Jonathan McCainley, McElhaney. offensively. And uh, Mark's going to drop back on a three-set drop. Quick slant to number 14. Hartman does not hang on to the ball there. It was in his hands and Hartman uh, thought he had away it. But as he was getting tackled. So that's going to bring up fourth down and six. So uh, had some success there early running the ball, moving the chains, and uh, now they're going to punt the ball over to the Vikings. First fourth punt of the for the Vikings against the Hawks, and that's got to make their defense feel good about coming out of the locker room and getting the stop. Absolutely, so Fernando Rivera is back for the kick for the Thunderhawks. And uh, wow, there's a hit on the, him. on the punter. Um, he's gonna get a good bounce on a relatively short kick. Um, but we got flags down and Rivera definitely got hit in the act of kicking. So it'll be interesting to see what this call is gonna be. Two options, Dave, there's a five yard variety and a 15 yard variety. That'll be a roughing the kicker, as indicated. That's going to be 15 yards and a first down. So exactly what the Vikings didn't want to do here 
uh, with a quick stop, as you mentioned, Ken, coming out of the locker room. Penalties have hurt them so far all day, and this is going to be a big penalty, especially if the Hawks can capitalize, penalty. continue to move down the field. Yep, had some key moments in the first half where penalties hurt them, and the, and the Hawks took advantage of them. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball for the Vikings, uh, they got caught for about 37 yards uh, in the first half of penalties versus the uh, Thunderhawks, one penalty for five yards. And so this one's really going to hurt them because it's going to give the ball back to the east with a first down over midfield. So Hawks in good field position here after that penalty. Jazuski's back under center. He's got double slot back. He's going to fake that, not get it off again. Not too for sure. That looks like what happened there at the end of the first half, Ken, where they kind of got him knocked back out of a field goal range where there was a fake up the middle and something wasn't right. And we're going to get another look here. It's a play action. He tries to, uh, he's going to roll to the, the right. They have the quarterback fake the hand up up the middle and, and tuck it in behind him uh, so that it looks like he did get rid of it. But uh, the Princeton defensive lineman was not fooled on that yeah, at all. Yeah, big number 19, Darian Henry for Princeton, was not fooled at all. When Ohio State's looking at you and you said you're going to play there, you're not going to fool uh, that type of player too many times on something like that. Absolutely. He swallowed that up with all six foot five of himself, and uh, Mark went down. There's a quick pitch out to Corey Dick on the right-hand side. Corey's looking for some running room, finds a little bit, sneaks out of bounds. Going to bring up another third down for the Hawks. Third and yep, it's five, be, eight. Looks like about third and third eight, just inside the 40-yard line. So um, Corey Dick gained up about four. He averaged 11 in the first half. Of course, the long run that he had for the score untouched on this side of the field. So this becomes a big play early in the second half, coming out of the locker room for the Hawks. This uh, offense is going to keep rolling here on a, on a long third down as Suzuki's underneath the center. He hands it off, and um, that didn't go very far at all. Flowers, Hand off to Lugo, Lugo Flowers. Immediately. Hawks are going to have to punt again. Looks like a linebacker came up and swallowed that up. So Princeton gets the stop they needed after the penalty. So we're going to get another look at that. You see Corey Dick go in motion. Lugo is right there in number 25. Looks like Christian Dixon, linebacker for the Princeton Senior Vikings. Senior linebacker. He's had a couple tackles so far today. So uh, Fernando's back in the punt formation. Bad snap. He scoops it up. He's going to get it off. End over end, high and short. See if it's going to take a Thunderhawk bounce. And it is. So the bounces have been uh, fair to the kickers tonight uh, both ways. The kickers have gotten the bounce to go their way after uh, short high kicks. Princeton was not near as aggressive going after the block on that one. They didn't go after the kicker like they did the first time. Make sure that they're not going to pick up a penalty there. So it looks like that ball's going to be inside the 20 yard line, right about at the 15. That's what you want if you're the Hawks. You want to give Princeton a long field. They chewed up about six and a half minutes on that possession. So no, uh, no score out of that for the Hawks, but definitely flip the field. I'm sorry, three and a half minutes. And uh, put the Vikings down to the 15-yard line. They got one set back, two guys in motion right now. Looks like they got some confusion. And there's a quick snap right to the quarterback. He's just going to keep it. Roll forward, ball's out. That's going to be a and penalty on Princeton. I'm not sure this play is going to stand. Looked like there was a fumble. I see one ref saying uh, ground caused. So they did get caught on that illegal shift. We're going to see another shot of that. Uh, miss the, the two guys in motion at the same time. But the quarterback just takes it, eats it, goes down. And I guess they're not going to give that fumble. They're going to say he was down by, by contact with the ground. It's going to be a loss of five for Princeton with the penalty. So first and 15 back to the 10-yard line. Another penalty for the Vikings. That's and, uh, not six for 67 yards. Not going the right way for the Vikings tonight as far as penalties. He's got one setback guy in motion. Uh, gives the handoff to the guy in motion, and the Hawks were not confused by that at all on the wide side. And looks like uh, 
He barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Max Michelson comes up from his safety position to make the tackle on here that Here you one. go. You see him coming right here. Uh, it looks like it was, it was number Hayden 33, King Hayden there, King. Yeah. Um, we're off the replay. He just stepped up into that hole. Second and 14 for the Vikings. So got one guy in motion, two left, one right, man in motion. He's going to throw this ball wide open in the center of the field. Little pitch and catch for the Vikings. They're going to get a first down, but I do see yellow out on the field again and another penalty, and the Hunter Hawks are pointing towards the Vikings. So we'll see what the referee has to say, and this would really hurt the Vikings after a nice pitch and catch there by Princeton to get a first down on third and 14, or second and 14, sorry. So there you go, Ken, another penalty, just as you were mentioning, number 72 uh, for the Vikings. Maybe that was number 52. It's been uh, their Achilles heel all day. Quincy Hughes just not at the right time after a nice strike by TJ right up, or MJ up the middle. And uh, for a first down, that's gonna be negated and bring up second and 20 now. East has to find a way to cover these Princeton receivers if they're Going to throw the ball downfield. They can't rely totally on Princeton getting penalties every time. And up motion. Oh. All. Beautiful defensive play. Almost intercepted. There's uh, Kyle Poppy uh, stepping in in front of the receiver and almost has his first pick, I believe, there of the season. Uh, but knocks it down nonetheless. We're going to get another look here, Ken. There's uh, MJ deep in his own end zone throwing the ball looking out. looking that way the whole time. And Poppy sees his eyes there and steps right in front. Yep, uh, East was in the zone there, and Poppy was ever able to watch his eyes, just as you mentioned, and step in and almost pick that off. But uh, nonetheless, brings up third and 20. Um, and there's an opportunity uh, for the Hawks here, you know, brought to them again by penalties by the Vikings. Kyle Poppy's eyes got pretty large there, uh, looking for the ball. Looks Horton's like they're going to be happy one. to just hand that off, get some yards for their punter. Uh, and play it safe. So uh, Princeton runs left, gains a few yards, gets their punter out of the back end of the end zone, and they're going to bring out the punting crew with the uh, fourth and 15. And a beautiful defense, well, beautiful defensive series by the by the Hawks, making yeah. sure that when Princeton had their penalties, they didn't uh, allow Princeton to, to get back down the field. Yep, and, uh, you know, good for Poppy. They like to throw his way a lot. Uh, these teams watch film, and, and he young. gets a lot of action. They know he's young, and so uh, he steps up and makes a good play. There's a, another short high kick. Corey Dick gets up underneath to call a fair catch. It's going to be good field position for the Hawks. They're starting on Princeton's side of the field here. And Corey makes a position. smart move there, just like he did earlier uh, this time, calling for the fair catch, keeping that ball from taking that uh, advantageous bounce for the punters the way it's been bouncing tonight. So, so back, back to Kyle Poppy. He is a very good athlete. Uh, he is young, like we said, but you don't get experience unless you play on Friday night. And they see a lot of potential in here. He started all year at that corner position, and he, you can tell by that defensive play getting in the right spot that he's gaining experience week after week after week. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, you know, um, picked on earlier in the season. Like you said, he's maturing as the season goes on and uh, doing a good job tonight and almost came up with his first interception. So East takes over, first and 10 at the 42, marks underneath center, ball goes right-hand side, and uh, what looks like uh, Lugo, Going to get another look at that, Mark. Just hands that right up the middle to Lugo Flowers. He breaks a tackle there. Fighting for some extra yards, Ken. Another young man there, a sophomore running back. And we've watched East for years, Dave. We know that East relies on their fullback to get the ball 20, 30, even 40 times in a game. So, so he's he, taking a lot of hits this season, and he's keeping on going. He grinds out four yards there, and it's uh, second and six. So uh, Mark looks at gives him it again. He pops and hops and gains about another two, two and a half yards going forward. You have to be tough at that position. You have to be fearless. You have to know you're going to take a pounding. And you got to remain healthy. You got to get in the weight room and you got to bulk up because you know you are going to get that hit. And as a sophomore, uh, East hasn't had a sophomore fullback in a number of years. They've had seniors and, and juniors uh, playing that position to Brosey last year with the graduating. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, Flowers stepping in and, and not missing a beat with the Hawks. They're, uh, they're dominating uh, with him getting a couple yards at a time. So there goes Charlie Kendrick in motion. There's a left right over to Corey Dick to the right-hand side. Corey's fighting and pushing and hard, and he's going to get close to that first down marker. He kept his feet moving. Doesn't go down on the first initial contact. Fights. Going to be just short by a yard, but what a run by Dick. We're going to get another look at here. Here comes Corey around. Big hole there initially. Gets closed up by the Vikings. Gets hit by two or three guys. Powering forward with the legs. And he is going to be just a no short at fourth and maybe about a half a yard, it looks like, from here, Ken. Hawks are going to go for it. And Tavier Flowers is stuffed at the line. I don't think he got it, Dave. I don't know if he got it or not. Uh, he went in there standing straight up and down, didn't lower those shoulders like he's been doing before, and I think he ran into that big number 19. Darren, Darren Henry Hinton. makes big stop. That's why he's a four-star athlete. And not a guy you want to go in with your shoulders up and not down. So uh, there's some discussion on where the spot is. They're, They're going to measure. We're going to see another look here. There's the handoff. See, standing straight up, doesn't get those shoulders down, and there's big number 19 right there. Vince Cornell and Troy Reisner trying to make a block for him. And uh, just couldn't get number 19 off of him, and that's going to come short? up a few lengths short, as we can see right there, Ken. And the uh, Hawks are going to turn this over on down. So big defensive stance by the Vikings, exactly what they needed at this point in the game is to stop this ball and get really good field position as uh, the Hawks went for it on fourth and about a half a yard. Got a few lengths, but not enough to get the first down. Not a total loss for the Hawks. They did run some clock there. Uh, got it down to four minutes and 43 seconds left in the quarter. But yeah, to come up short there. See if they can stop Princeton here. So Princeton will take over on downs. MJ's in the shotgun again with a single set back. Wide right and left, man in motion. He'll hand it off to him. He's going to put the brakes, cut it back left-hand side. A lot of running room. Got blockers out there, but uh, the Hawks catch up with him pretty quick. Foster on the end around. They ran that play in the first quarter. The wide receiver coming around. Looks like Josh Jones got over there quickly to cut that off, or that could have been a lot of running room. Jones came a long way from the corner position. Uh, he was trailing Foster as he came in motion. Positive play for Princeton. Give him second and two. Yep. They're going to be in that same set. Wide right and left. Man in motion. One set back. Fakes off to the man in motion. Gives it off to the fullback. He tries to go up the middle. Looks like he's going to get a couple. And it's going to be right at the sticks. And the refs are going to wave that on and give him a first down. It's going to be first down for the Princeton Vikings. There's a little replay. There's number seven going up the middle. It's Thomas Boyd. Thomas Boyd is the only returning skill player for the Princeton Vikings from last year's team. He grinds out a first down for them right at the sticks, and they'll be set up at uh, first and 10 on their own 45-yard line. Hawks are going to need a stop here. Horton's going to keep that one, and they do stop him. Goes right up the middle uh, for about five yards. Just under four minutes of the quarter here. Horton's such a dynamic runner. And you got to keep him on the inside. If he gets to the outside, he's dangerous, as we saw early in the game. Right, and, uh, you know, that, that one big strike he has. So, uh, boy, that clap is uh, getting the Lakota East defensive line jumping but they Princeton wants a penalty but there was no contact made they got back and their Vikings look over to the sideline and reset there's a quick throw to the left hand side little shake and bake and uh, looks like he may have stepped out before the six there it's going to bring up third down Princeton thought they had the Hawks drawn off sides but for that, that to be a penalty, you have to make contact on the jump. Yeah, you're going to see right again here. here. Quick, quick pass right to the outside. and Over to number one, Sterling Burke Halter, wide receiver, senior from Princeton. He's their leading receiver, according to the statistics. He hasn't done much today. Uh, but he's tall, lanky, and can catch the ball. He's got good hands. 
So here's Princeton's normal set. Two wide man in motion. Fake quarterback keeper. He's trying to get right to that first, first down. down. That's going to be an interesting yeah. mark as well. If it's going to be a right foot, left foot, and see where we're going. They need to get to the And they may 45. be measuring this or no. Nope. Looks like we have a Thunderhawk down. Injury timeout. Can't see who that is. So here's the replay. Number six for the Vikings. Faked off to him, and T MJ keeps it to go up the middle. I don't. He. They're, they're going to give him forward progress there it's for the first on down. Where the ref marks this. That, that could have gone. So, uh, I think uh, Justin, Justin Katona. Katona is the injured player for the Thunderhawks. Uh, tough junior linebacker, multi-sport kid too. Plays a little lacrosse and. Uh, Boy, he had to be hit pretty hard to be down because he's a tough cookie. So um, we're gonna take a little break here while they tend to Katona, and we'll be back here in a, in a little bit. 21-7, Lakota East in the third quarter. So here we are back at the Hawks' nest in the third quarter after an injury timeout for Justin Katona. Looks like Justin's all right, walking off on his own accord. So that's a good sign. Uh, like I said, going in the break, that's the one tough kid right there, um, junior linebacker here for East. And uh, he's not having anything to do with the medical staff, it looks like. Ken. No, he'll be back in knowing Justin. He's going to run his fingers through that long hair of his, get the helmet back on, so and, and I guarantee he'll be back on the Hopefully he just got there. the wind knocked out of him, and he'll be back here shortly. But here we are back to live action. MJ keeps the ball going up the right-hand side, and he's going to get about 11 yards and pick up another first down. And he's got this Princeton Viking offense moving. He's running off tackle, he's running up the middle. He doesn't have the big play that he had, but when you get eight, 10 yards at a time, you're gonna be moving down the field there. And you can hear that wake, woke up the Princeton band over there and uh, they're excited about the, what the offense is doing, moving the chains down the field in the right direction. So uh, here we are with about 237 left in the third quarter and the Vikings are moving the ball, as we said, and, and nothing fancy, uh, Ken, just their typical uh, too wide. They bring this man in motion and they fake or keep and uh, there's a fake and the uh, quarterback keeper up the middle again. Barton good for another six yards. So uh, the East defense is going to have to uh, figure this out here real quick. Um, like I said, nothing real special. It's pretty much uh, their normal offense. Um, you know, he either keeps it in the belly of that uh, man in motion, takes off himself or, or does a quick handoff there to the to the running back, and the East seems to be confused as they just keep marching down the field right now. They seem to have found a formation that they like, and they're gonna stay with that formation, sending the slot man in motion right in front of Horton. And why change it if it's getting you the same amount of yards each time? Yep, there's a handoff to number 21. He looks like he was gonna throw that ball, and nobody was downfield for him. Beautiful coverage down the field by the East secondary. That was a Michelson comes in from and makes the sack. There's a the senior defensive back comes up, was not fooled. Number 21 for Princeton took that wide. D'Angelo Foster looking to throw the ball, but uh, nobody home downfield, and the Hawks ate that up for a short loss, um, bringing up uh, third and 11 now. Michelson's been out with a separated shoulder up until this week, so. Great to see him back on the field and make a big play like that in his return. Yep, as you mentioned, Corey Dick was filling in for him, and that was what allowed Corey to go back over to the offensive side of the ball and pick up uh, where there were some injuries there. And we're going to get a quick timeout here by the Princeton Vikings as they didn't like the setup they had on third and 11 here. That's important for the Thunderhawks. Get Princeton to use these timeouts, especially if it's going to come down to the end to, to a one-possession game potentially. Uh, you want to make sure that Princeton does not have those timeouts at the end. So there's a good good shot of that uh, Viking offensive line who's been doing their job right now in this drive, uh, moving the ball uh, pretty much all on runs. They're big boys. They block well. A couple four stars in there. Princeton Band trying to fire up their crowd. Coming yep. north on 75. These schools only separated by five miles. There's a, there's a quick shot of uh, the Hawks' defense. And uh, Coach Dave Koger out there talking to him. And they're trying to figure out a way to shut this all down really, really quick. Third and 11, Hawks need a big play here. 
This is a chance to get Princeton in fourth and long. East has turned it over on possessions twice. Or punted, punted once and turned it over in possessions once. So they have not uh, scored like they did in the first half. So after the timeout, the uh, Vikings are ready to go. The Hawks come out. Referee's going to wind it up here. Under a minute to play, third quarter. So there's a the man in motion. Uh, it looks like he's got to drop back the pass, quick pass. Uh, not for sure if he got that in or not, if they're going to yeah, call that a caught. catch. And looks like they are, and they're going to be able to pick up a first down on third and 11. So we can see here, get his hands under the ball on that catch. Uh, that was a quick, uh, quick strike by the Vikings. Uh, just a quick right to the chains and turn, and the ball was on him. And uh, he sat down and I guess scooped that ball up according to the referee on the far side there. So no instant replay here in high school, so uh, we'll have to trust the stripes that they got it right. And yeah. here we go on with the first down to the fullback there, and there's a not, at the line. not a whole lot going there up the middle. And that looks like number 47. Aaron Sharp. Had to stop there. And I believe maybe an assist by Adam Hundemer. Big play for the Hawks. That's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. Yep, with uh, single digits just counting down here in the third. Still with the same score here at the Hawk Nest at the end of three, 21 to 7. And we'll be back at the start of the fourth. <laughs> Hi, I'm Greg Wilkins, Butler County Engineer, here for an update on the Union Center Interchange, the new DDI Interchange. So right now, what you see behind us is we're putting the finishing touches on the uh, retaining wall, uh, start building up the dirt behind that to help us uh, get to the asphalt portion of it. You're seeing asphalt getting laid across the project in multiple areas. That will help us get into the next phase of the project, move traffic around. Uh, once we finish that, um, be able to open up uh, new areas and finish up the project from that angle as well. So we appreciate uh, everyone taking their time and uh, keeping everyone safe out here. The DDI has been designed to help motorists move through quickly through an interchange. It's, it eliminates a lot of the crossing traffic that those left turn lanes, instead of waiting and stopping, to wait to go onto 75 or to come off of 75 and get onto Union Center that eliminates those left turns having to wait. They flow through and they immediately can turn onto the direction of travel that they need to go. So, so we're, we're excited to see it go into effect and it should be, it's, it's a unique thing and we're excited to see it as part of the area. So uh, here we are back in the fourth quarter at the Hawks Nest, the East Thunderhawks 21 and the Princeton Vikings 7. Dave, you and I noticed that Vince Cornell, the center for the Hawks, was playing with a cast. I believe he got injured second play of the season. Uh, you and I were yep. doing the game, and, and he went down with an injury. So that shows a lot of toughness by, yep, we'll by catch, Cornell. We'll catch him when the offense gets back out there. But, uh, you know, great game so far. A little quick uh, shout there again to the band, uh, keeping us entertained in between quarters as they're getting ready, set to start the fourth quarter here. Vikings got the ball. They're throwing deep on a second and long, and they're going to connect in uh, left-hand side and get that ball inside the 10-yard line. So the Vikings come back out. Nice Don't waste catch. any time, Ken. Right back to Burkhalter, their leading receiver. Burkhalter over there on Poppy again, and uh, and. They, see they, him catch the ball and turn after catch. Keeps his feet inbounds and uh, not even close to the sideline there, actually. Yep. Gets some extra yards. Gets about five extra after the catch. And it takes uh, number five, Josh Jones, to come over and, and rustle them out of bounds. So First and goal for Princeton at the five. Here they go with a handoff to number seven up the middle, and he's going to dance right into the end zone. Boyd is in the end zone untouched relatively. And Boyd scores a touchdown for the Princeton Vikings, and the uh, that changes the game real quick in the fourth quarter here. We're going to see a replay. There goes Boyd. Hunnamer gets pushed away. 
uh, 47 there, and uh, I missed there. It looked like uh, 11. Max uh, not wanting to step in front of that freight train coming downhill with about seven yards of steam nice coming in, at it. Inside blocking by the Vikings line, as we've, we've talked about before. This there's a high snap. And there's a block. So that changes things a little bit for the Hawks. Oh, and then I see a hanky in. coming down. So I think that was Adam, Adam Hundemer. We were just noticing that he changed jerseys in at the half um, with the block. Coach Haynes not too happy about that call there. But I think we're going to have a running into the kicker or something afterwards. So they're calling the personal so. foul after the kick, which means the kick is no good. Right. Princeton does not get the extra point. They'll assess the 15 yards on the kickoff. Right. So uh, one of Princeton's linemen is getting carried off the field there on the far side. There's Michael Howard trying to get an explanation maybe as the senior captain, and um, Coach Haynes not happy with that at all. So not too for sure what happened after that kick, if uh, we got a shot of that or not, guys. Um, Hundemer blew through that line and for the block. Like I said, he looks like he switched jerseys on us uh, at halftime for some reason. Number 40 right there in the right hand of our screen. And that kick was just the product of a bad snap. Yep, there was an ugly snap. Uh, the snapper couldn't really get a good hold on it. And uh, and when timing's off on, on, on those plays, it, it things go haywire. Um, unfortunately, though, uh, I'm not for sure who was that that was being carted uh, or helped off the field there, if that was their kicker for Princeton. Looks like a big lineman. Um, number 49 for the Vikings. Michael Everson. So that it, that he is listed the as the kicker. So hopefully that young man is okay. Um, like I said, it would be interesting to see a replay if we got one on the PAT of what, what the referee saw there. But uh, I saw the block, but I did not see the uh, penalty afterwards. So technically still a one-possession game. But that definitely helps the Hawks in that if Princeton does score a touchdown, they'd have to go for two to tie the game. Yep, down by eight, 21-13. So they'll get to kick this so. from the 45 and should kick it in the end zone potentially unless they don't have a backup kicker. Right. Their last couple kicks have been short, so we'll have to see. Uh, so they use one guy, I think, for their uh, punts, a different guy for their PATs and kickoffs. This will be number 23, Hayden Cobb, um, who he had the little pooch kickoff earlier um, that then ended up in a late hit and, and good fielding position for the Hawks. So um, there's a good shot of the Hawks' nest. There's that pooch kick again. Oh, that's going to be an onside kick, and they got it. Oh, uh, wow. Penalty comes in. I don't know if that went 10 yards. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, the Hawks sure do seem confused. It looks like uh, they were ready, though, because it looks like Corey Dick was right up there in the front of the line, and the Princeton player jumped right in front of him, and I don't know if that went 10 yards either. Um, Coach Daniels pulling out a couple stops here. Because they did have the penalty off the PAT, which allowed Princeton to kick off on the other side of the 50, and it doesn't look like Coach... Coach Daniels does not is agree not with happy the explanation there. Not too happy about at that. all. We haven't seen the official call yet. I think he thought he had a quick one and not a bad idea right there. You know, uh, catch uh, catch a sleeping early in the fourth quarter, get the ball back in good field position. So here we're going to hear the call from the uh, referee. So it sounds like kicking interference. Kick catch interference. I don't know if the Hawks called so. a fair catch on this. So, oh, yes, he did. Corey Dick called for the fair catch on so this. So there's. Can you fair catch a kickoff? I guess you can. There's a, uh, I said that I saw hands up on the front of the line. So East must have known that they pulled that play. And uh, it looks like maybe Corey did get a wave in there. Um, which if he did, smart on him, another good senior play, and uh, it results in uh, the Hawks getting the ball back and 15 yards for the penalty. 
So here's a quick handoff to Charlie on the left-hand side. That didn't go very well. And they're going to lose a few yards for second and 12. It's Kenrick's first carry of the second half. So there's a he replay. To go. Quick look up the middle. Mark pulls it back out, hands it off to Kendrick, and he doesn't go anywhere on the left-hand side. So it's going to be second and 12 from the Lakota 40 three-yard line. So, Dave, the, the receiving team does have the right to call a fair catch. That's an extremely intelligent play from Corey Dick. Oh, my gosh. Mark flips it out to uh, Charlie in no man's land. Uh, again, our offense is not gelling here going out in the second half coming out of the locker room, which uh, you would think coming out of the locker room with a lead, you'd be on, on Mark, but uh, they are not. There goes Corey out with a lead block, and I'm not too for sure where pitch, Mark uh, was pitching that. I think he saw black jersey and just threw it. Corey was being the lead blocker, and Charlie was behind him. So, so not the time to panic here. We need to uh, bear down and yep. make sure we're confident with the ball. As I was saying before, Dave, that's an incredible play by Corey Dick calling for the fair catch. So uh, he, Really smart. Yeah, here we are, third and 15, and uh, the Hawks are digging themselves a hole. Now they go back to that same play. Charlie down the left-hand side, he gets some good positive yardage, but that's going to bring up a fourth down and long. And uh, the Princeton Vikings are getting fired up over there before that play. Uh, they see a momentum swing here, maybe. Not the start to the fourth quarter that the Hawks wanted here, but. There's a pitch to Ken Kendrick. He goes down the left-hand side, just. Uh, Short of the 50-yard line, so. Rivera is going to have to get off a good one here. The he bounces picked, have gone the punter's way. Picks up seven yards, but they needed 15, so uh, not quite what they needed. And, and Rivera's back there to punt, and uh, Princeton's got dual threat uh, returners. So he gets it off high, deep, um, catches it about the 18-yard line as a fair catch on that punt. Uh, looks like they're going to give him some forward where he waved his hand up to the 20. And uh, that's where the Vikings will start off. Ten minutes left in the game. Hawks defense is going to have a test for themselves here. They have an eight-point lead. They need to contain the receivers, make sure the receivers don't get yards after catch. They need to spy on Horton, make sure he doesn't break off the long run. If they do that, they're in good shape. But Princeton has shown they're moving the ball fairly easily lately. So Horton hands it up the middle to number seven. Not a whole lot there, but he fights for a few yards. Boyd gets maybe two or three yards up the middle. Seen a heavy dose of Thomas Boyd here in the second half. He did have the touchdown. He's gotten a couple yards. So, uh, you know, Princeton's been in this position uh, earlier in the game. Uh, same, same side of the field and uh, had a quick strike. So, like you said, the Hawks defense has got to dig in. That man goes in motion. He fakes it. I'm Jay Hank. Hands on, holds on to the ball up the middle, and he's going to fight his way up just to the first down. Horton does a nice job of keeping his feet moving. His knee almost hit the ground. Got about four extra yards. Going to get another look at this one, Ken. There's that fake to the guy in motion. He just goes off of that running back. Right there, he's almost down, and then right he just there. keeps moving, dives forward for an extra four. Gets right to that first down marker and gets a first down for the Vikings. So. Man in motion, single set back. He's going to hand it off to number 21 this time. He goes wide. He's not going anywhere. Michael Howard's got him. Michael Howard. And, and he gets help from Hayden. Oh, King. he gets away, though. And he's going the distance. What happened there in that backfield? He's going to go all the way for a touchdown. Vikings. Hawks had him wrapped up multiple times, and they are just deflated. Princeton's so, going to get a sideline warning, lately showing for. So here we go. Here goes 21 in motion. See Michael Howard come in pursuit right there, and he's got him arm wrapped up. Hayden King comes. There's a shot. Michaelson by comes. Katona's over there, and he just dances right around them. And D'Angelo Flowers. Foster does not go or Foster's down. Foster's does not go down. 
And he's got the number one up as he slides into the end zone. That's a big time play. That is a big time play. So Princeton, by missing the extra point last, uh, most likely will go for two here. For a man that stands at 5'7", about 140 on the, on the roster here, uh, he made a, a huge running back play right there uh, with some, some big tacklers for the Thunderhawks could not wrestle him down. So still a lot of time here, but Princeton's opting to go for two, tie the game, Horton's yep. got the ball. He throws a quick slant wide open, nobody near number one. Sterling Burke Halter, the wide receiver out of the Vikings for the two point conversion. Here you see it, Ken. Just simple slant play, easy toss, easy catch. Not a pretty ball by MJ, but when you're wide open, it doesn't have to be much when you're, it's a, just a PAT uh, point after for two, and this ties it up. So after no scoring in the third quarter, Princeton has struck twice. For two touchdowns, a missed extra point and a two-point conversion, and we have a brand new ball game here at the Hawks Nest. Brand new ball game, 21-21, with 8:52 left in the fourth, and so um, both teams have been here, right? Uh, 14 unanswered points, as you just pointed out, Ken. Uh, both here in the fourth quarter for the Princeton Vikings, and uh, you know we this game, as we said at the beginning of the uh, of this half. Uh, was tied up 7-7, and, and then the Hawks broke out and took a lead and uh, came out of the locker room maybe a little flat offensively and and uh, with a just a great football play by number 21 there by the Vikings. Foster, he uh, gets them into the end zone for two long touchdown runs now tonight. One by MJ, the quarterback, for 80 yards, and I think that one was... Uh, about 70 something yards. Um, but what a heck of a run by that young man to get the Vikings tied back up and they're back in business and it's a new ball game. So I know we talked earlier about last year's game. Ironically, it was 21-21 at this point in the game last year. And yes, you uh, did. So there's the exciting. pooch kick again by the Vikings and it's bouncing around. It's bouncing around giving the Hawks some trouble, but it looks like they're gonna be able to secure that. Nice play by Jack Hartman. To right bring that in. inside the 40, about the 38-yard line. We're going to get another look at that kick, and there goes number 23 with that little pooch yeah, right over his head. Pop up here, bounces, yeah. and Hartman with some nice hands. Yep, and he knew he was going to get hit and held onto the ball. So that's a big play for the Thunderhawks because the last thing they needed to do is put the ball back in the Vikings' hand because the momentum is definitely swinging their way. And you can hear it, you can see it from their side of the stands right now, and um, the Hawks need to get something generating here offensively because they have been misfiring so far since the half. There's a quick handoff up to uh, Lugo. They need to have some confidence here with the ball. They need to act like they've been here and in this position and not worry about the score anymore. Their job is to move the football down the field and get in the end zone. Yeah, you'd think they would go back to what was working there in the first half. Uh, just a good dose of the option, mixing it up and uh, marching right down the field. So um, see if Mark uh, can be that senior leader, get this offense moving back in the right direction. And uh, Got a little extracurricular here with 14 Hartman on the outside with the Princeton corner. So going to keep our eye on that and see if uh, that draws a, a penalty here. Rizuski holds onto the ball a little long there, throws it out to Charlie and uh, Princeton Vikings were not fooled by that play at all. And so they're all over these option plays now. And the East is going to have to figure out something to answer the call here, bringing up third and eight. Vikings have made a nice adjustment since halftime of stopping that uh, pitch and run. So the, you know, with the pooch kick, uh, the Thunderhawks start off in a good field position, but just can't seem to move the ball. Um, that's going to bring up third and eight. And uh, going to force East into a passing situation, and that's not in their comfort zone necessarily. Krajewski is going to be in a shotgun. Yep, he's in the shotgun. He looks back, steps up in the pocket. Not a whole lot there. Does a quick throw over to number nice 14. Catch, Jack Hartman. Jack Hartman with a great catch. So Diving grab by Jack Hartman. He's there got you, some nice hands. There you see Mark drop back in the pocket. The pocket folds around him. He steps up, throws a nice little strike over to... 
Hartman was falling Hartman. down as he caught it, before he caught it, and a beautiful concentration by Jack Hartman. There. Hartman on his knees, yes, Ken, and, then, and he grabs and pulls that in. And two big plays by him, one on the kickoff, one on that pass play on third and eight. So here we go. Uh, Good decision by Mark not to pitch the ball. Princeton's defender, Jaheim Thomas, was ready to intercept the pitch. Thomas is uh, heading to UC next year. So and, here we uh, get another look at it. Mark fakes it up the middle to Longo. Uh, goes to pitch it, but it ain't there. And big number 94 for Princeton. Todd Harding, the senior. Grabs a hold of Mark Kazuski and, uh, and wrestles him down. And that was probably, like you said, a smart choice. Back to Jaheim Thomas. Heading the UC next year, another four-star athlete. Uh, and he was not going after Mark there. He was getting ready to intercept that pitch if Mark were to, to throw that. So Mark hands so off to the Corey inside Dick. there. And uh, haven't seen him much this half, who had a big half in the first half, as you mentioned, Ken, over 100 yards. And uh, maybe Coach Rick Haynes is going to get back to that uh, mix up in the option, keep the Vikings on their toes here. So East uh, scored their second touchdown by pass pass, and we haven't seen them go to that they they tend to wait for their their time to do that so after the loss uh corey picks up some positive yards and it brings up third and eight again uh just as it was in the last set and we'll see what could coach Haynes dials up here um, for the thunderhawks he's gonna have to take a time out to talk about this make sure everybody's on the same page yeah i think the game the uh, game clock was run or Play clock was running down on him there, and uh, Coach is not happy about that at all. He's mad at somebody there. On one of the wide receivers, and uh, this offensive set just didn't look right for Mark. He was running out of time and probably wise to go ahead and burn one of those timeouts now. Not quite sure who was taking the brunt of that talking to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure that made a lasting impression. Yep. Uh, this is a, you know another crucial part in the game here at the... Uh, Late in the fourth quarter, scores tied, third and eight. Um, you know, you're on this side of the 50, and the Hawks definitely want to keep these chains moving in the right direction at a ball heading, heading north towards the end zone that they're driving towards. Doesn't do you too much to pin Princeton deep with their quick strike offense. It, it clearly helps, but they're not a methodical get up the field team. They're a big play kind of team. So whether they start from the 30 or the 20 or the 10, it's so not going to make much of a Hawks difference. Hawks got their work cut out, that big defensive line, and they're uh, they're definitely hyped up right now after their two big stops and see what uh, East has to do. little quick drop. There's a quick throw out to, that looks like Adam Hundemer. Uh, Hundemer in a tight end. In a tight end. So Did maybe that was. for the first down? The reps are going to spot him. He definitely has enough for the first down. For the first down, and. Uh, So here we're going to see Mark takes a three-step drop. The defensive end comes in, and uh, Hundermer peels off, protects that ball, gives a little stiff arm, gets enough for the first down and forward progress, and the first Hawks down. are in business with four new downs. So Hundermer was a tight end a few years ago. Uh, got some time on the East offense as a sophomore before moving him to defensive end. I believe last year he had a couple possessions at tight end as well. So being versatile like that, you want to get the ball, and the players are your your, your game makers, your playmakers. So that Absolutely, was Ken. So that might have been the spark that the, the Thunderhawks needed. So here we go. Oh, nope, no, we're not going to go anywhere. So we've got lots of laundry on the field right now. So I'm going to take a false start on the Hawks. It's going to be on McElhaney. So there's the replay. Mm. Boy, I don't. Not quite sure I saw where that was. Not for sure where I saw the false start either on the replay we'll either. Take but, the uh, official's word on that one. Guys. Uh, and you got to play through. Great shot there to our, shout out to our camera guys uh, zooming in and, and I didn't see anything move, but uh, boy, a whole lot of flags flew. So somebody must have seen something that we didn't see and the camera didn't pick up. So there goes Krasuski uh, with a handoff to number Rodney seven, Heath. Rodney Heath. Going Heath in long. An offense. So Coach Haynes pulling out some stops here. So there's Rodney Heath, the defensive back. He's fired up. Coming in motion. Showing some wheels coming around in motion there. 
Mark Krasuski hands it off to him. Rodney makes a, some nice moves. There's a great block back there. And uh, he goes down the right-hand side all for about 15, 17 yards for a first down. So what Coach Haynes is doing is he's putting playmakers and gamers in the game here. Not that the yep. others aren't doing it, the others are more methodical, but he needs those. 21-21 late in the fourth, and you're looking for a win. I understand, Ken, exactly. So here goes Mark, uh, just not looking. He's gonna have to eat that one. Not looking right here in this uh, option. Um, Quarter four minutes left, ball's on the 21 for East. Field goal range is probably close to this point. They may have to get inside the 20. Getting real close to the field goal range there, so. Uh, not for sure uh, what happened there. Looked like Corey Dick was wide right and uh, was open. Uh, maybe just uh, too many arms around Mark's uh, shoulder pads to get rid of the ball to know that he could get a good pitch out there. So Hawks job's going to have to make sure they don't turn it over. They need about four or five more yards and give Gavin Myers a chance at this. So there's double set, uh, Corey and Longo, and there's going to be a quick handoff up the middle to Longo, and now we're moving in the right direction on... Lugo gets the third ball down. to about the 15-yard line, and that's a good position for the Hawks there. Third and five. I believe they are in field goal range. They, they did kick yep. two field goals at Mason. Uh, so actually third and four, Ken. They gave him an extra yard there, and the ball's just short of the 15, just inside the 16-yard line. So I think you're right now they're in that field goal range. Need to hold on to the ball, keep the chains and the down marker going forward. There's a quick handoff up the middle, not a whole lot there. Uh, we got fourth down. So fourth down. And it looks like Princeton's gonna call a timeout. Yes, timeout Princeton. Um, that's their second timeout with 258, realizing that the Hawks are now in the red zone and either going to punch this ball in or get three, and they want to conserve a little bit of clock to give themselves some time. I don't see our field goal unit coming out. Gavin Myers is still on the sideline. The last time they were in this position, they let the play clock go down an extra 25 seconds. They, then they took a timeout themselves before Myers, and now they are kicking. They are sending the field goal unit out. Yeah, I think I just read uh, Coach Haynes' lips there yelling for the field goal. So um, this will be a l extremely important play for the Thunderhawks right here. Ken. Myers definitely capable. He hit two against Mason. Very consistent on his extra points. Another senior. So after the Vikings call a timeout to conserve some time so that they can get the ball back, not knowing exactly what the Hawks are going to do. It's going to be a 32-yard attempt here for Myers. Yep. Going south to north with the, with the wind, what little there is out there. So there's Low a snap. snap. And, and looks like he's right down the middle. He got it. So Big time kick for Gavin Myers, giving the Hawks the lead. Big time kick. I think that was uh, Corey Dick on the snap back to Mark Kaczewski for the hold and Myers uh, putting it through the uprights. What an interesting series, Dave. We saw Hunderberg go out and catch a pass. We saw Rodney Heath come around the end. Two defensive players on the offensive side. Yep. John McElhaney with his arms around coach there. The band uh, showing their appreciation for the drive. And uh, yeah, Ken, like you said, uh, you know, not necessarily that, that guys weren't getting the job done, but put some playmakers in there to know um, Coach Haynes put the ball in their hand and let's see what they can do. Um, with a tight game, 21 to 24 now after the field goal. Dave East's defense is going to be put up to the test here the final three minutes. Princeton definitely capable of scoring within three minutes or less, and Hawks need to step up and make some defensive plays here. Absolutely. Uh, 2.54 left in the game with a timeout. Uh, seems like plenty of time, and as you said, Ken, you know, we've seen two scores now by the Vikings um, in a quick hurry. Um, 80 yards and, and 70 something, I believe, two yards on that that long drive by Foster, uh, run down the right hand side. So they've got that quick strike capability. So the Thunderhawks defense has to be aware. Um, they're going to be coming out, uh, I'm sure, running and and throwing both. So the defensive backs uh, got to be ready. 
and uh, not go into a prevent. So we'll see what the defensive coordinator calls up here for the Thunderhawks as uh, Gavin Myers gets ready to kick this off after his field goal of 32 yards down the middle. So going this way in the first half, Myers did put the ball in the end zone three times. Don't think the wind is blowing quite as strong right now, but Myers Not as approaches. much, but uh, Myers hits, uh, hits it, drills, uh, it. Uh, drills it down inside about the two yard line, but that's returnable. And uh, East Special number, Teams makes the tackle. Number nine there for the Princeton Vikings. That's uh, Leroy Bowers. No, yes, Leroy Bowers brings that up to about the 23 yard line. So we'll get another look at it here, Ken. He gets it about the two yard line and he brings it right up the middle, found a little seam, but uh, somebody gets a big paw on him and uh, he wasn't going much further than that as uh, Corey Dick and number three uh, Smith were right there ready to, to, to bring him down. So the Hawks defense about to be put to the test here. So Under three minutes. First, MJ Horton, tough to stop. Yep, first and 10 at their 23-yard line. So here we go. There's a quarterback sneak up the middle. He's got a seam. He gets hit with a shoulder and gets wrapped up by number 11. Max Michelson on the tackle. Max Michelson. So uh, I hope after that last long run, the uh, Thunderhawks definitely know they need to wrap up these, uh, these uh, runners from the Vikings. So uh, here's the replay of... MJ coming up, there's the hit, and uh, Max goes ahead and grabs a hold of him this time and, and wrestles him down. So, But uh, not after he gets uh, enough for a first down after These about 11 are yards. These going to have so. to be on their toes here. There goes another quarterback uh, run. Good right for about five. The, yep. Hawks are okay with that. He follows his big fullback, number seven, there and finds a seam and gets about five yards to about the 40-yard line. Two minutes right. left here, Dave. We talked about earlier how Princeton had to use a timeout early in the third quarter. Yep. And uh, just in case it was one possession, uh, that's going to come into play here. They only have one timeout left, so they're going to have to be so uh, same, strategic about when to use that. Same exact offensive set, two wide man in motion. They moved. Um, yep. Looks like we got a false start on Princeton. Boyd and Foster were both in motion at the same time. Can't so, do that. So that's the second time tonight they've had double players in motion, two guys in motion. We're going to see another play replay of this. Uh, so it's coming full circle here for Princeton penalties hurting them here. And uh, East is just fine with, with Princeton's mistakes. Yep, so that'll bring up uh, second and 10 uh, with 150 and running after they reset the, the ball and the clock's running here. So uh, Princeton's right here in front of us with the ball on the 35 yard line. MJ goes back in the uh, pocket, throws it over his right-hand side towards his bench to number five. Uh, 21, that's going to be Foster. 21, Foster. Foster number two. Josh Jones on the coverage. Number the five. was high. Yep, number five, Jones on the coverage. Here's another good look at that. Just a little too high for the 5'8". Uh, is that a junior? He's a junior or sophomore to climb that ladder. Um, Third and ten, to, Hawks so. defense uh, living up to the test so far. Minute 35. So the fans are getting into it. They're stomping and clapping out there, getting a little thunder going here in the nest. And uh, MJ falls back into the pocket. He gets flushed out by Katoni. rolls right. He's got a man wide open about 10 yards down. And Corey Dick is uh, back there in the defensive backfield. It's be Foster again. That's his favorite target. And Foster... Gets the catch and goes out of bounds to stop the clock. Minute Corey forces left. him out. Here you see Katona break through, flushes him to the right, but he's got a Foster wide open, about 10 yards, and there's Corey uh, playing defense now. Again, just as Coach Haynes put some of those defensive players on the offensive side, he's got playmakers now on the defensive side trying to hold this uh, three-point lead. It's a position that Corey's played all year long so far, so not new to him. Absolutely. So here's the same set as we've been saying all night. Quarterback, uh, man in motion. He's going to keep it, go up the middle. And uh, Aaron Sharp gets him from behind. Or Justin Katona. Yep, Katona him got him. Behind. Looks like the ball may have bounced out there a little bit, but the refs were pointing that the ground caused that, so nothing Minute there. Minute 10 and counting. This is very reminiscent of last year. Very reminiscent. So here we are with uh, right at the one-minute mark. Foster's going to go back and throw the ball with a left-handed throw. That's a push-off, but nothing called. 
Brings the catch down. And he Foster goes up and grabs pass. it. Number one. That's Sterling Burkhalter for Princeton. Here we're going to see on the replay, Foster he goes out. They off. set this up earlier in the game. Foster and the left the hander. Left hand and there's the, the on the left hand. There's the, there's the left hand on, on the back of number seven right there, not called. And he climbs up and grabs it. And they're in business. Number seven handoff to Boyd. And he goes Seven's bumbling, stumbling down. Line. And uh, now East Main need to take a timeout. But it looks like Princeton uses their final timeout. 34 seconds left on the clock. First and, and goal at the one. First and goal at the one. Here's the replay on the last play. Uh, Boyd going down the middle here. Blasts through the hole, grabs a few guys on his back, and uh, he just carries them down to the one yard line. So first and goal, and you talk about the Hawks having to dig in. Boy, they really got to dig in now, Ken, to keep the Princeton Vikings out of the end zone and force an field goal here to try to tie versus he, take a win line here. Stand. You got to watch out for the quick pass that they ran on the two point conversion. That was relatively easy for them. They may want to throw uh, so that if it is incomplete, the clock stops, or they have plenty of time to run two plays, three plays, yep, they've and got, pound it in. They've got time here to run a, a play or two. The East fans are, are trying to give the Thunderhawks some support here. So here we go, Dave. It comes down to, to this play or the next one. And I see that the Thun or the Vikings got a different package in there. They've got a big package in there. They bring in Super two defense. Jumbo. They bring well, a jumbo package in. It's going to force the Hawks to take a timeout, wondering what that was all about. I saw number 19 in there, Darren Henry, the defensive lineman in the backfield. And 94. Todd Harding, another defensive tackle in there on the backfield. So uh, that, like you said, uh, gave uh, Coach Shane something to look at, and he quickly used the timeout. Maximum blocking in the backfield. You see a lot of NFL and college teams do that, and goal line offensive plays. Student section needs to get our defense fired up here. Yep, they were uh, jumping and hollering there, uh, coming all the way down in front of our booth, uh, trying to get the uh, the fans on this end to uh, stand up and shout. So uh, uh, with home field advantage, hopefully to disrupt a little bit of the Vikings call here. But uh, tall task right now, Ken, at uh, second down and, and one on the goal. There's that jumbo package there still in there. Got Boyd in the backfield. You got two line tight line. Blocking. Quarterback's going to keep. They're going to just try to push him in from the back. Mm -hmm. No sign yet. That was a quarterback keeper. Big number 94 was trying to push the quarterback in there. No signals by the referee. They're stopping so, the clock for some reason. Todd Harding, 6'2", 300-pound defensive end. You're going to see this replay. The quarterback just keeps it, and they just push him. And they Clock try again. Ticking, they do it again, and this time. The boys are calling touchdown, in. and now they call it in. So, so not too sure either, Ken, why the clock stopped there he stopped it on a run. To get things set, but. So here he goes again. Oh, no, his knee's down. His knee was down. Look in the replay. Great shot by the guys right there. He's down on the one-yard line and then gets pushed in. Unfortunately, no replay in high school. So the touchdown stands. And here goes the PAT. Good, but boy, is East not going to like to see this on film, Ken, tomorrow morning when they see that knee touch the ground back about the yard and a half. He ran the ball, quarterback kept it, his knee went down. And then he got back up and, and put the ball over the goal line. I don't even think Coach Haynes is aware of that because. Uh, they won't see that until tomorrow on film. But. Though he's upset about the previous play to get him down there and to go scoring position. Um, Ten seconds left. Hawks are going to need a, a miracle Hail Mary here. Yep. To score. What a, what a comeback by the Princeton Vikings, Dave. Absolutely. As, uh, you know, just as we were saying at 21-7, uh, to 7, there was a lot of football left to play. 
statistically, the Hawks dominated the first half. Yep. And did not get any points on the board, save the field goal here in the fourth quarter. So, yeah, the Vikings definitely dominated this uh, second half. And the score stands right now at 28-24. And now the coaches are getting a little excited. I don't know if... Uh, if coach saw that happen, he's pretty animated and he's not a happy camper right now. And if he saw what we saw on the replay, he's right. Um, and it's, a, it's sad that it's gonna end that way um, when you ask your defense to dig in and they, and they dig in knowing what's coming. Um, that's gonna be a tough pill to swallow tomorrow morning. But uh, Back to back goal line stops. Nonetheless, credit to the Vikings for getting down there in this position and playing hard in this second half to score 21 points in this, uh, in this half. So there's a kickoff fumbling around, and the East picks it up, runs around. Probably so Hawks are going to have one play to go 60 yards. Probably not what they needed right there to run around and burn some clock, but... Um, Playmakers trying to make plays here at the end of the game. So there's 4.3 seconds left. Hawks are going to get the ball. They do have a timeout, but I don't think that's going to do them a whole lot of good unless they can uh, do a quick hitch, step out, maybe can get a little bit further to midfield where they can even take a strike to the end zone. Because Most I don't likely time for one play only. They're going to put a five-wide receiver set in here. I don't think we've got the... Uh, the arm for most high school quarterbacks to go this distance to get it close to the end zone. So uh, 4.3 seconds left, down four points. So they definitely need to put it in the end zone. Um, Vikings definitely in the back in the prevent. Sideline warning on the Hawks. So there's the side judge who uh, He's getting an airfall. I think he wants him a couple steps back from uh, yeah, he coaches is. back from where he's at. He's the one that oh, called the now touchdown. We're another penalty. Now we're going to get an unsportsmanlike. Yep, he is the one that called, came in and called that a touchdown, um, and did not see the ball this is gonna be handler's knee here. down. So I think, I uh, think maybe they did see what we saw up there again. And, they are still chirping in his ear, and he was not having any part of that. Gave him a warning, then turned right around and threw another flag real quick after that warning. Um, for a sideline infraction. So, um, I'll stir the fans up a little bit. A little unfortunate uh, to end in this, this manner. But, uh, you know, hard fought game from the boys. Lakota a little flat in the second half. Princeton taking advantage of that. So here goes Krzyzewski, oh. goes back. And uh, Princeton just comes comes with the lumber and gets a sack to end the game. So here we go. That's our the final, final from the Hawks nest. 28-24, Princeton Vikings over the Lakota East Thunderhawks. Live here from Lakota East. Uh, again, Ken, been a pleasure as usual, to be in the box with you. Uh, Dave Royce uh, uh, and Ken Yablonski saying thanks to everybody out in uh, Hawk Nation uh, for a great game tonight.